Second day, Saturday morning, and we're going to start off the open and under 23 men's K1 500. These are semi finals. So we've got closest to us Danny Morrison, Liam Lace from Wanganui in lane two, Joshua Bull, North Shore, lane three, Quay Thompson uh, from Poverty Bay, lane four. Looks like we've had a good clean start there, Grant. Brant Clancy in lane five from North Shore. Max Brown uh, from Wanganui in lane six. Logan Fergus from Karapiro in seven. And Neil Gard from Ottawa in lane eight. And we're all on time. Looks like we've got a scratching there, have we? Yeah, yeah. We have uh, got a scratching. I'll just work out who that is. Well, that's... Um well, we got one, two, three, four, and lane five, so maybe Grant Clancy not there. So, yeah, pretty good day today, and uh, at least as we got here this morning, John, we said uh, we, at least we can see the start <laughs> line here, and yeah. uh, this time yesterday we were only just able to see the paddlers when they got to about this stage in the race. So it looks like uh, Quade Thompson coming through, breaking the, the two up. No, just on his right also. In the white boat, that'll be Max Brown. Maybe, yes, think so. Yep. So Brown in the white boat, uh, wearing the black. He's uh, in lane six. So he and Thompson uh, going for it in this, as you'd expect. And on the inside of Thompson, that's Joshua Bull from North Shore in the blue. 100 left, left to go. And Thompson, who's having a pretty successful championships again, Enjoys the early morning workout. And he's going to take it to the line first, ahead of Max Brown, who's just going to see off uh, Joshua Bull, who will finish in third place. So first event of the day, and it is won by Quade Thompson. It's the first semi-final of the men's K1 500. Well, the big program, of course, with the final event and prize giving at around half past four. So we will have uh, lunch and prize giving, and really encourage. That's at uh, after 11:30. So really encouraging to see so many people getting down to view and support the prize giving yesterday. The two sessions. I wonder how that AGM went last night. Oh, it was great. Was it? Yeah, it was brilliant. So I heard. Good. I say you heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I did um, take off very early last night. Still got a. Bit of a rough voice this morning, but I will clear that. Well, a lot of talking a yesterday. A cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd think as a lecturer I'd be used to it. Yeah. Well, anyone who listens to you thinks that you make a, you've made a career out of talking, John. So, <laughs> so now we come up to uh, the second of the semi-finals. This is uh, event number 72 on your program. It's the second heat of the men's K1 500. And uh, they're just... Getting into position now, Roy, Andrew Roy of North Shore is in lane two, and Sam Lees, also North Shore, Casey Nataki, Ashton Reiser. So the first four lanes are filled by North Shore competitors, and there's two more on this race as well. Uh, Zach Ferkins, Poverty Bay is in six, and Ben Nichols, Arawa, in seven. And then Jim Prato and Michael Esterhausen uh, from North Shore. So six of them from North Shore in this second semi-final of the Open and uh, under-23 men's K1-500. See all the uh, North Shore paddlers there, John. I love that little talk we had with the coach from uh, North Shore yesterday afternoon. And quite, I said, I asked her, I said, you know, what's the big attraction? She said, we make it fun. Yeah. And I thought, oh, canoeing, fun. Can't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Like mornings like this, you know, you just think, oh, it'd be nice to have a sleep in and it's pouring with rain. And so, yeah, the, the fun part escaped me. It was always there, though, these sorts of events. Well, you can combine hard work yeah. and fun, can't you? So that's the key to it, uh, particularly at trying to keep people attracted to the sport, just to make it enjoyable, to have something to look forward to every day. I think, um, you know, that strong age group, that under 14 and that under 16 that we saw with so many heats yesterday. Uh, I mean, kids pretty soon decide whether it's fun or not. Mm. I think, yeah, they've, they've hit, hit something, uh, a little note 
for the air to attract them all and keep them. Now, so as we're looking at our first final coming up after this, it's our C-class boat. I've never ever commentated on a C-class <laughs> race. So, <laughs> yeah. so there's, as I said yesterday, there's always something new happening in this sport. Here we go, second race of the day, second semi-final of the men's K1500. Blistering start here, you, as you can view way down from your vantage point down to the 500 metres, you see that that's a pretty good start from the inside lane, in particular that's Andrew Roy, and moving two out from him, that's uh, Casey Nataki, and alongside of Nataki is Ashton Reiser, so Zach Ferkins will be in the picture there as well, so that's... Good start as they belt out the first 100. Yeah, I think I can see that red boat of Zach Ferkins from Poverty Bay. I agree, he in lane two, Andrew Roy got great starts. But I think if we had the, the drone up and we're looking over there, I think we'd probably find that it's very, very close between lanes two, four, five and six. Yep. So you come through those Green boys, you can see there that the red boat might just have it. That's um, Zach Ferkins in lane six. Inside him is Ashton Reiser and Casey Nataki. Those three have taken it out now. And red means danger for everyone at the moment. Red shirt, red boat. Zach Ferkins, Poverty Bay. Now, if he glances, and he won't need to because he'll see two in from him, Casey Nataki in lane four is coming at him. There's so a beautiful kick by Casey. May need to kick again, or he might be happy just in the top two. But that was a good strong. He certainly jumped up that spot. Yeah, Ferkins holds him. Ferkins yeah. holds him to the line. And it is uh, Ferkins lane six, four, and three in that order. Uh, six, four, and five in that order. So uh, Ferkins, Nataki, and Reiser. And out in the yellow, I think that's Jim Prato out there. In lane eight. So another good race there. We're getting a good start to the competition, the open um, under 23 men's K1500. So the finals of those are at about uh, quarter past 10, 10 past 10, quarter past 10. So here we have, folks, event 73. If you haven't seen this, pop out of your tent, come down. This is a very interesting, very technical craft, this. And of course, they have the same uh, numbers in them. You can have a C1, which of course is the individual, C2, two people, and a C4. And you get those ones up and going. <laughs> they can put out a big wash. This is a, an Olympic event, of course. Uh, C-Class, it uh, will be in Paris, as it has been in uh, all previous Olympics that uh, canoeing has been involved. Very strong in the what used to be the Eastern Bloc countries, but uh, countries, uh, so Canada, of course, where it started, but countries such as Poland and the Czech Republic and Hungary, all very strong in C-Class. And here we have uh, four starters, Jun Schürze of Mana, um, Wing Kam of North Shore, Michael Esterhausen of North Shore, and Penelope Strickland in lane six. Let's get the binoculars up on them to see how well they get away. Looks like we've only got three starters. I think we've got one scratching over Thor. That might be Michael Esterhausen, is it? Yeah. Lane five. Yeah, so lane three is there, lane four and lane six. So Schertzer, Kam and Strickland. So it looks very technical, doesn't it? You, there seems to be much more danger of overbalancing in there. So in the crouch position or, you know, kneeling position, one knee forward, on the opposite side of the stroke. And you look at that 
John, and I'm sure that you'd like to get out there and work out <laughs> how to steer it. And, you know, that's, um, that takes a bit of experience and to do this very well. So Jun Schutzer looks to be well practiced at it. So too does Penelope Strickland. Remember we had uh, finished our world championships in France, Paris in 1991. And the Spanish, because they were hosting uh, the Barcelona Olympics, they paid for many of the athletes to come down to Barcelona and uh, race, which was uh, good fun. But so, <laughs> I was a bit naughty of us. So many of us really took the mickey out of it because we'd line up to the races. And I remember lining up in this boat. Um, and of course, we were taking for the 500 metres, taking 10 minutes to get down the course. And guys who normally would be in the K class um, were in these. And the guys in the C class were in the K class. And it was just, <laughs> oh, they realised it was a good laugh. But um, they are very, very, very technical. Boat. They, they paddle with what we call a J-stroke, so just right at the end, if you think, you know, in a, in a kayak, if you were just paddling on one side, you'd go around in circles. And that's exactly what would happen with this. So just at the end of their stroke, they come down and they flick out yeah. to the right, forming the letter J, and that's what keeps them uh, coming down the course. And just coming down the course, coming home now, is lane three from Mana, Yawn. Well done. And over the other is our only lady in the race coming home second, Penelope Strickland. Well done, Penelope. So there we are. It's uh, the C class, single canoe class, and still coming home strongly now after a, a little bit of coordination problem and steering problem is... Wing calm, and he gets the hooter now. So the three competitors in that, the Open C1 500, that's been won by Michael Isterhausen of North Shore. Up to event 74 now. And that is uh, the 18 and under women's K1 500. This is the first, oh, just one semi final? Yeah, one semi final, John. So we had yeah. the, all the heats just yesterday. Coming in around yeah. the pontoon now. Yeah. Just a little bit of a tailwind this morning. Nothing much to it, really. Still good for lining up. We've got all the people on their pontoons. Thank you, big thank you to them. So we've got Paige Tawoon from Mana. She's in lane one. Addison O'Leary from Wanganui in lane two. Amber Dean is from Poverty Bay in lane three. Hannah Baxter from Eastern Bay in lane four. Even Fuller from Eastern Bay in lane five. Hope Duffett, North Shore in lane six. Abby Gold from Hawke's Bay in seven. And Grace Richardson way up there in lane eight. And Bay of Plenty. Looks like they're all pretty much in now.
uh, they get this all clear, the start, and Trawern in lane one is uh, from Amana. O'Leary is alongside here, her in lane two. In lane three, that's Amber Dearness from Poverty Bay, who has got a quite a handy start, but she'll be just in behind uh, Hannah Baxter of Easton in lane four. Baxter looks to have got the best of the starts and the early advantage. Look a couple along from her, Hope Duffett of North Shore in lane six. But they're now settling down to an order that, well, will it change or not over the next 150 metres? You can still see the, see the uh, wash trails coming off each and every boat. So it's still pretty calm out there. Yeah. But I certainly think it's going to be looking at this, the uh, boat. Looks like Amber Dearness, is it? No, I think Hannah, yeah. Hannah oh yes yeah, indeed, yeah, uh, Dearness yeah. and then Baxter, yeah, so yeah. they're in lanes uh, three and four. They look to have it uh, yeah. to themselves at the moment with maybe Baxter having the advantage. We'll see them come through the the boy line there. Didn't and have the best of starts out of the two, but um, I still think we'll give it to uh, Hannah on her right hand side in the blue boat in the black vest. Coming home, not just good, nice, long, strong strokes. So Hannah Baxter from Eastern Bay has the lead. On her left, uh, the red and white of Poverty Bay is Amber Dearness. And there's uh, some action a couple away on from Hope Duffett in lane six. Looks it'll be those three who fight this out, but certainly Baxter has had control of this race uh, over the last 400 metres anyway, and she'll take it to the line comfortably, a boat length ahead of a fast finishing Amber Dearness. And in lane six in third place, it'll be Hope Duffett of North Shore. In lane five, Eva Fuller, Eastern Bay, and uh, Addison O'Leary, very close to on the outside, Grace Richardson. I just saw uh, Addison. She thought, oh, I'm a bit tight here. One, two good quick strokes. She might have just got into Pip. Grace over the far side. Oh, that was a little bit close. <laughs> well done, ladies. So we'll uh, leave it to uh, sort out the final for the under 18 woman, just one semi final in this morning's race for them. So now, got the big boats happening, the K4s, the under 18 men. It's a straight final. Four crews. We've got North Shore in lane three, closest to us. Poverty Bay, and we've got Awara in uh, five, and Waitara in six. And um, just looking through this, there's some great athletes. Gilbertson. Jarvis, Story, Coyd from the North Shore, all good, strong, under 18. There's Egan that we've mentioned a few times, Ollie Egan from Poverty Bay, Kennedy, Hamblin, Campbell, his teammates, Chamberlain, Rogers, Monk, and Monk from. <laughs> this is going to be anybody's race, I yeah, think. It's going to be so. a. F I don't think there's going to be any resting in it, not for a straight final, but they're going to come flying out of the blocks, that's for sure. Just waiting for the crew over the farthest, further side. That's White Trap, just to back in. I see a few brollies being hoisted out there. That's a little bit of rain, not too bad. Just uh, heavy rain here overnight, as <laughs> all of you wouldn't know, because you'd hear that. Well, possibly not much sleep had for some people. Just a reminder about making sure you drop your numbers back in when you've uh, completed your race. Thank you. So here we go. This is the final of the under-18 men's K4 500. North Shore, Poverty Bay, Arawa, Waitara. Arawa combination looks strong with... Gosh, it does on yeah, paper, doesn't it? Dylan and Lewis yeah. Monk and Tiago Chamberlain. 
Rogers in there as well. Let's uh, we'll watch their start if we can. They're coming out of lane five, so second from the outside. All's up, and yeah, you can see plenty of splash. In fact, they all look as though they've put everything into this start, as you'd expect. So on the inside, that's North Shore, Gilbertson and Coyd and Jarvis and Story. They look pretty smooth away and might just have a slight edge. Out in the middle, though, it's Ottawa, Chamberlain, Rogers, and the Monks. This will be a classic. Watch this, everyone. This is the grand final of the K4 500 for 18 and under. And bragging rights here. Will it be Ottawa or will it be North Shore? Or will Poverty Bay slip through between them? White are just a, a shade back at the moment. Gosh, I was uh, just focused on that Ottawa crew. Yep. Man, they, they have got some horsepower in there. And I think coming up to the 200, they've certainly got it. And I don't, I would probably bet the house they're not going to relinquish this lead. Oh. That is a great lead. Look how smooth they, they are. Oh, they Mac, look. That looks fantastic. From up high here, that Arawa combination have got it all going for them. I see North Shore just slip a bit and Poverty Bay have now got the opportunity to slip through for second. But what a dominant performance from the Arawa club of Chamberlain, Rogers and um, Dylan and Lewis Monk. They are three boat lengths clear and not holding back at all. And I think, uh, as you say, John, excellent racing from the Ottawa Club. That probably, for me, was one of the b best races of the, well, <laughs> of the event so far. Poverty Bay did sneak in for second ahead of North Shore. And uh, Waitara finishing through now. But, well, I think that's a, a good video to watch. I mean, you're looking at coaching a combination, a young men's combination, young women's combination, and say, look at how Ottawa did this in 2024. Yeah, I think coming down the course, maybe North Shore, you know, was sitting in second spot, but I think Poverty Bay come up over them, finishing very close to the end of the lane. So well done, first, second, and third. And thank you for um, White Trap popping your boat in. A little bit harder for you guys. I think young crew will probably see that same crew back. Next year. Well, we hope so, eh? Yeah. Yep. White trap in the under 18. So, another straight final. Here we go. The Masters. Rosemary. That's who we were <laughs> thinking of yesterday, John. Yep. She's Rosemary back again. Rosemary Gatland. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Jex, Sarah Jex, and uh, Nenny Dissa of North Shore. This is. Uh, the, the event wouldn't be the same without those. No. So, uh, welcome back, ladies. It's good to see you. So it looks like we've had a, a good start here, closest to us in lane two, North Shore, Nini Dis, doing very, very well. Gosh, she could have hopped in the uh, any seat. Look how strong she's battling, John. She could have hopped in that Ottawa boat in the, in the under 18 men's K4. She looks that strong. So I think we've sorted out our first, second, and third. Everybody's going to get a medal out of the uh, Masters woman. Another year older and still doing it. That's yes. Fabulous to see. 
And I know Rosemary from the North Shore Club. She um, gets still gets out there and paddles around the lake. Yeah. So she'll, of course, uh, all the young, the youngins in the club will know her well. Yeah. She's very much a team member. And in your your chat yesterday, you know, uh, it was it was about making it fun for the yeah. youngsters to keep them, but it's also making it fun for oh. the older competitors and those who just love to be involved and, yes. and active. So that's a big thanks to the mums and dads, of course, and the caregivers. It's coming through. So this is the Masters Women's K1 500 and Nanny from North Shore coming through nicely, maintained that stroke perfectly throughout. She's a competitor, really competitive person and has her eyes glued onto that finish line now and she paddles right through it. And <laughs> yeah. She's put a good effort in. Really she's good stopped. Effort. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Masters champion for 2024. Gosh, that's a, that's a Karapiro boat if I ever saw one. The, the bright it? yellows and reds. Yeah. yeah. And that, of course, is... Uh, Sarah Jack Jex. Yeah. yeah. That's a good workout for 8.45 on a Saturday morning. <laughs> what would you rather be doing? At home, reading the paper, having a coffee, or being here paddling, John? Um, I think there's 300 <laughs> people has answered that question for us. 300 athletes. <laughs> they're all, no, they're all up there reading the paper uh, and having a coffee. Uh, look at these young fellas all going yeah. out now in their K2s. So really a big round of applause around. down there, everyone, while you're standing around watching the boats. But give it to Rosemary, who's back yet again uh, at the National Championships. Great competitor. And what an example to so many people. Lots and lots of... Uh, people who are slightly senior would be looking at this and saying, I just wish I could do that. And of course so you can. Yeah. Absolutely. If my eyes don't deceive me, I think she's got a new boat. Well, we'll have to find yeah, out. Yeah, I think last year she was paddling in an orange one. Might have had a spray Well paint. done, Rosemary. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. So here we go. B final. Under 16. Event 77. <laughs> oh, no. We'll just, um, the young John's is going to run down the stairs and get the draw. <laughs> I did offer. Thank you, John. Yeah, so we're going to get the draw. We'll bring that to you as soon as we can, folks. The under-16 events uh, B final. And, of course, then that will roll into event 78, the A final for the under-16. Great racing in the heats in the semi-finals yesterday. Uh, so that's why it warrants a B final. The numbers were brilliant in that age group. So it looks like out there in lane lane five, is it? Thank you, John. It's uh, Rosa Davies, Davis from North Shore, going very, very well. So in lane one, quick, I'll quickly go through these. Emma Turden from Bay of Plenty in lane one. Uh, Katia Cameron Bennett in lane two from Mana. Layla Stovall from Hawke's Bay in lane three. Hayley Stewart from Wanganui is in four. And Rosa Davis, who looks going very, very well out there in lane five in the white boat from North Shore. Hannah Gard from Ottawa uh, is in lane six. Michaela Bates uh, from Hawke's Bay in seven. And Victoria Haveneth from Mana is in eight. 
and Lendra Owens from North Shore in lane nine. And I think lane three and five at the three moment. And five yeah. and those white boats are yeah. showing up in this gloom. So that's uh, Hawks Bay's Layla Stovall in three and Rosara Davis of North Shore in five. And in between them, you just see a bit of movement from that light blue boat in uh, lane four, Haley Stewart from Whanganui. And uh, a couple out from her, that's uh, Hannah Gard of Arawa. So we've got four boats really that have sorted themselves out. Gosh, Haley looks good in this, is it in the blue boat there? Yep. Yeah, lane four. So the white boat in lane five and the white boat in lane three. Those are the two at the moment and still surging through that light blue one. Yes. In between, that's Haley Stewart of Whanganui. She she's, she's coming up, she's coming through here. She's left, done her run well. So she's gone up to second. There's a lovely little kick. She's come through to second and I think, John, she has now poked her nose in front for first spot. She's walked past lane five. That is an excellent race. Wow. Within a, well done. Yep. And a good kick. Oh, your coach will be happy with that. Absolutely. And she retained composure beautifully to go through. She came back from a good uh, boat length and a half or two boat lengths back. That's Haley Stewart of Whanganui. A great race by her. Very impressive. Uh, she poked ahead of uh, Rosara Davis of North Shore, who you could see was doing everything to hold off Stewart, but couldn't quite manage. And Layla Stovell of Hawke's Bay, also a fine race in lane three. So that's the B final. And uh, Hayley Stewart will be very happy with that victory here today. Yeah, congratulations, Hayley. That was well done. Sitting back there. Good kick. So here we go. These, uh, we'll probably see Hayley up into the, this final next year. So this is the A final of yeah. the under 16. And we were most impressed yesterday with uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. Uh, she had the fastest time of the lot and uh, really um, was a memorable performance from her, but also Peyton Quartel, uh, Alexis Toy, and uh, Zoe Anderson and Alexis Toy have ke combined well for Whanganui, and they're both in this race. So let's watch and see what we get from, from this. This is the A final with Emma Dixon of uh, Arawa in one, Anderson is in two, Quartel in three, Kennedy in four, and Toy in five, and then we have Taylor Newman of Poverty Bay six, Stella Crossland, Arawa in seven, Holly Rowland of Eastern Bay is in eight, and on the far side it's Helena Pinea of Arawa. Good lineup. Let's see there in the starter's hands. Gosh, we're these full nine lane finals are just brilliant to watch. Good strong start for this under 16 women's A final. All nine out athletes are right out there. Just on, I think, lanes two, lane three. That's Zoe Anderson, Peyton Quartel. But I'm not riding off over there in lane four. Where is she? There she is, Jacqueline Kennedy. She's well into her work now. 
That's where the action is. Now you can see Kennedy White Boat in lane four. Alexis Toy is staying with her in five. And in seven, I think that's Stella Cross and also away well. But, gee, this is a remarkable first part to this race from Kennedy. And she's well advanced on her inside lanes, ones, two, and three. She's also well advanced on the rest of the field. Yeah, her tempo is just hasn't dropped. She's still still flying down that course. I thought, oh, she's going to sit and steady herself up, but no. She's flying through the 200 now, so well over half the race go. We'll probably see her even pick it up even further now, but she has really got the bit between the teeth. Absolutely. Uh, just as a repeat of what she showed us yesterday with that stunning uh, heat race in which she was the fastest qualifier, and she's just motoring through here. Two boat lengths clear. Her nearest rival now is in lane seven, and that's still Stella Crossan, who's finishing well from Arawa in the black. And some good action, too, coming from Alexis Toy in lane five from Whanganui. But no doubt about it, Jacqueline Kennedy of Poverty Bay has just grabbed this race by the scruff of the neck right from the start. Outstanding start and then left the rest in her wake. Let's have a look. She's crossing the line now. That's a win to Kennedy. Punches the air and deservedly, and second place goes through now. So what an advantage for Kennedy. And second place is Alexis Toy, and third is Stella Crossan. But the title for 2024, the 16 and under women's K1 500 champion, is Jacqueline Kennedy of Poverty Bay. Yeah, and I think deservedly so. She really showed that in the heats yesterday. And if uh, you were fortunate enough to pair up with her in the K2, you're pretty assured of a gold medal in your back pocket. So congratulations, Jacqueline. Well done. So that was the uh, under-16 women's A final. So moving into event 79, which is the um, under 14 men's. This is this age, huge age group again. See them all lined up there coming through. So this is the K2. So, and we've got two heats, pretty much all lanes covered. Uh, so uh, North Shore, they're in lane two. Hawke's Bay. They're in lane three, Eastern Bay in lane four, Waitara in lane five, Ottawa in lane six, Waitara in uh, lane seven, and North Shore in lane eight. So we've got two North Shore pairings, two Waitara pairings. Showing that, that great depth once again. young athletes will know the routine now John come in dry your boat weigh your boat get the stamp of approval it's the last thing you want is fly down the course and all that training that you've done all through the year to be faulted out DQ'd out with a an underweight boat Big thank you to the volunteers down there in the tent that are seeing that's running nice and smoothly. So we're just waiting for the last of the crews with this under 14 men back in their K2 in. That looks like lane 7, lane 6 just coming in as well. Probably in the starter's hand momentarily, ready for a great start. If you're looking for the drone pictures, folks, we just haven't got our, just this inclement weather, we just haven't got our drone up in the air at the moment. So as soon as it clears, finds up, and the rain stops, we'll get that up for you. Where we 
will be without care and age, John. Yeah. Our techno genius, yes. Just helping us with our computers. Big thank you to Karen, making sure everything runs nice and smoothly. So they're away now. This is event 79. So the fourth boat in, is it uh, White are having a few problems, Miners and Wheatley? And North Shore also yeah. just getting themselves back on track. But uh, Eastern Bay, Roland and Faithful. Looking good, no flaws to their start, but the most prominent boats are to the right of them. One of those is on the outside, that's Umans and Hills of North Shore, and a couple in from them, and Lane 6 Arrow is Panea and uh, Semenov. So the th three Paneas are here again this year. This is uh, Daniel, who's in this boat with Semenov, Igor Semenov. Lane three, that's the uh, lane four, rather, third boat in Eastern Bay. Roland and Faithful just getting a little bit. Ah, they're back in time now. Yep. So the three of them coming through the 200 now looking quite impressive. So that uh, blue boat, that's Eastern Bay, Roland and Faithful. Panea and Semenov from Arawa have the advantage though. I think the battle is going to be for second and third here. Certainly that uh, Arawa club boat. In lane six they have the lead and look to be quite comfortably taking this race. Oh, just uh, losing this synchronization in lane four again that's Eastern Bay and that will cost them I think they might just drop back to third place they picked it up again now they might just hold off the yeah. fast finishing lane six. Oh, lane six cleaned it out lane yes, eight yeah. yes yep I think so yeah I think Eastern Bay got there just ahead of North Shore on the far side so it's uh, 14 and under K2 500 Looking forward to seeing all these competitors back next year and showing us how much they've learned over the last uh, 12 months. It'll be good to see. See, coming through now, Hawke's Bay, Tasker and Hamlet. In lane two, it's uh, that other North Shore team of Gao and Gabor. Taking it right through the finish line. And out there in lane five, that's whiter up. And lane seven now, also whiter up. <laughs> this is the back peddler of lane five. It must have been young Wheatley pointing to his opposition where the finish line is. <laughs> we, we passed it before you did. Good to see a little bit of banter between the lads out there. Come up here, here's the finish line. We're already through it. <laughs> well done, guys. So that's our first heat done and dusted. On to our second heat, which is uh, event 80 for these uh, young men, the under 14. So no crew in lane one. We've got North Shore. Gosh, folks, there's a few North Shore crews. Yeah, I think there's three in this race. Yeah, two in, the, in that first one and three in this one. Five all up. Got to get somewhere, surely, with the old scattergun approach. So, anywho, we got North Shore, Lomax and Sun in lane two, Hawks Bay, Egan and McBretley. We got Whitesra, Miners and Sleep in lane four, North Shore, Owens and Belden in lane five, Poverty Bay, Kinsella and Wainohu, and then North Shore again over this far side, Almega and Laskovskill.
So nice, good, clean start from the last heat of these under 14 men's K2 500. All boats out cleanly. Oh, the North Shore peering. Just took a sharp right, but I think leading out Hawks Bay, Egan and McBetry. Going very well indeed. I think they've got, oh, that North Shore pairing just seemed, oh, who's that Lomax and Sun just having some problems with the steering, maybe the balance. Uh, they're back up into it now because they're going so well. They're certainly in there for a placing if they can just maintain it. They're coming home, McBreedy and Egan over there in lane three. They're just a bit reminiscent of what we saw from that Arrow of four, aren't they? Mm. Lovely. Working together well, maintained that pace throughout. They, their start was excellent. They've taken advantage of a couple of hiccups by the other crews. And uh, this is really good teamwork by these two, Egan and McBreety from Hawke's Bay. Second of the heats. Just whipping through the different coloured boys there, marking 100 me metres to go and thinking, oh, no, not still 100 metres. <laughs> uh, they're not easing up. This is nice, controlled racing from the uh, Hawke's Bay team. A little bit of a fight and a tussle out there between lane six and seven, but I think lane seven had the measure of lane six to come home for second spot. Look, they look very good coming down the course too as did lane six. So North Shore second, Poverty Bay third. And we just see lane two go through, that's North Shore. And still to track is... White Track Club, is it? Yep. From lane... Miners and Sleep, yes it is. comes our last boat now, lane five. It's our last North Shore pairing. Owens and Dunlop. Well done, lads, getting up there, giving it a go. Probably pairing up for the first time to have a race at your national championships. Good effort. Yep, don't be despondent. No, yeah, I've got to take not. every every learning out of this, there's no doubt. Next up is uh, another final, and it is the 14 and under women's 500. So Emma Dixon fills lane one. No, that can't be right. I've just, no, we've just done that. Yeah. Here we go, John. You're good. Would you keep a bit of control <laughs> of the papers? Uh, Raria Atta of Poverty Bay, Celia Willoughby, Nicole Panair, Claudine Mielo, Greer Hambleton, Maya Parker, Isla Fraser, Kaya Ohio Hall, and Ruby Jones. So looking through the, the clubs there, now, Poverty Bay represented at one year, two inside lanes, uh, Ottawa in lane three, then Hawke's Bay, Hawke's Bay, Hawke's Bay, Bay of Plenty in seven, Hawke's Bay, Hawke's Bay in lanes eight and nine. A dominant field from the Hawke's Bay Kayak Racing Club. Again, you talked to North Shore yesterday and we're chance to have a chat to Hawke's Bay today. Or, um, yes. You had a chat to North Shore. A chance to have a chat to Hawke's Bay to find out how come they've got so many, such a strong youth contingent as we see this start. And a good one too from Panea from Arawa in lane three. The Arawa combinations are, or competitors always get the starts well, don't they? Lane three, you go um, four, five, six. They're also in the frame at the moment. This is the final of the women's 14 and under, women's K1 500. So a good 150 to 200 metres already covered. And, um, oh, you could throw a blanket over them all. Probably now just poking your nose out in front is lane four, Claudine yeah. Merlot from Hawke's Bay. 
maybe now she's decided it's time to go. I've got too many boats around me. I better make a kick somewhere. Well, I think the boats around her are now, the prominent ones are on her right, and they're all teammates. So Merlo in lane four, uh, slipping through quite quickly now in the darker coloured boat is Greer Hambleton, but Maya Parker also in lane six. Now you'll get a very good view of the fact that Claudine Merlo has taken over, taken control of this race, nearly a boat length clear of the rest. Just on her left, the Ottawa lady, Nicole Panier, she decided it's time to kick as well. She's coming home well. She might climb up. I think we've got our first three, but she is pushing. She might climb up for a third spot here, John. Well, if the she other does. Girls can see her out the corner of their eye left. If she does, she'll ruin the trifecta for Hawks Bay here because at the moment it's Merlo, Parker, and Hambleton. Maybe that's changing as Hambleton in the green boat starts to move up ahead of Maya Parker. But no doubt about it, an all the way win and a very impressive victory too for Claudine Merlo of Hawks Bay. She gets there just ahead of her teammates, uh, Greer Hambleton and Maya Parker, and uh, Nicole Pernaya in fourth place. Oh, she just ran out of real estate, didn't she? Getting up there into fourth. Excellent race. Yeah, we're just having a look at it on the live streaming now, and there was that green boat in lane five, less than a metre, less than half a metre. Uh, between Greer Hambleton and Maya Parker. So congratulations, Hawks Bay, one, two, and three in the women's K1500. That'll be a good club photo, I think. Yeah. We'll hang that one on the wall. If we could move Amy Fisher out, put, get her out, and put this one in its place. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Amy wouldn't mind that. Such a humble person. So on to uh, event 82. So here we have, so we might have the uh, under 14s and age group under 16, but here also is another very, very important grouping, and this is the novice people. So uh, event 82, the novice women's K1500, of course. You can be of any age group coming into this. This is your first time up racing, getting to uh, a feel of what it's all about. And of course, once you go from that, you might have to find the next nationals go into uh, the respective age groups. But gosh, John, we've got, <laughs> we got full heats for this, for the novice woman. So um, in lane one, we've got uh, east side paddlers. That's uh, Lily Van uh, Poverty Bay in lane two. Poverty Bay in lane three. We've got uh, East Side in lane four, Eastern Bay in lane five, lane six, North Shore, lane seven, North Shore, uh, and in lane eight, Eastern Bay. Oh, John's just shown me the times here for um, our under 16 women's K1500. Jacqueline Kennedy just with a slight tailwind, two minutes flat. That's excellent time for an under-16 athlete. For a 500, well done, Jacqueline. That's, whew, that's a, that must be a PB, surely. Yeah, and just um, the c even in the under 14s. Thanks for this, John. Yeah. The, uh, Claudine Merlo, 211 for under 14. So congratulations, Claudine. Gosh, you've got done some training to get start getting times like that for your finals. So there we've got a good clean start in this first novice woman's heat over 
500 meters, <laughs> and I tell you what, for a novice to be racing over 500 meters, that's pretty daunting. Isn't it? Yeah, maybe 200, you know, for my first up race at a, at a nationals. But uh, no, we've got him down there racing in the 500. Well, three from the outside. That looks pretty good from uh, Brooke Conover. Remember, we had Rob Waddell here, was it last year? No, the year before? Uh, I yes. Think. Yeah. For his first time in a K1. Yeah. Olympic gold medalist from uh, Sydney. In a, in a water sport and plenty of training on this particular area. Oh, he was yes, as, a, yeah. as a rower, but now we look through this lineup as it becomes uh, clearer to us. Uh, Poverty Bay's uh, Brooking Harpu in uh, the second lane looks pretty good, but I think still the person we spoke about earlier, Brooke Conover, appears to have uh, the edge at the moment, but not by much. Uh, others are coming at him. Oh, yeah, that's closed up quite dramatically. So Brooking Harpu and to his right is Moitara, both from Poverty Bay. I wonder what various ages they are out there. As you mentioned, you can be any age to be a, a novice. And and you can also, I forgot to mention, you can be any class boat. So normally you hop in a boat that you're comfortable with. Because you've got to admit, these, the K class boat, your K1s, for your first time, can very, very tippy boat. So normally for a craft, for speed, built for speed, we lose um, stability. And if we want to put a little bit of stability in, we're going to sacrifice a little bit of speed. So a uh, very fast, very fast boat. So first time racing, we might see some, what we call a TK class out there. But I would say, John, looking down there, that's very much a K1 coming home first. Yeah. That's uh, lane two. Kairahi Brooking Hapu in lane two. He looks good. Moitara too. and lane three just holding it there as you talked about it being a very tippy boat and you feel them going, can't you? And mm. it's an experience. And when you're that close to the line, you don't want to end up going in the water. And so that's excellent. Poverty Bay winning the first two spots. And in lane six, we have North Shore's Brooke Conover. So close to for. Uh, Lily Van Amede, uh, Van Amede of Eastside. She looks around as if to say, who tried to pronounce my name there? And uh, the rest following quite quickly through. So that's Novice K1500. I'm just looking out there, some of those athletes, um, I w wouldn't be surprised if they're involved in other sports too. Oh, well, some come from Waka Armour. Yeah, Trips, yeah, Waka Arma, I think so. It's, um, great little crossover sport. And, of course, uh, many of the athletes that we see out here, surf life saving as well, even swimming. Yeah. So two heats of this, too. That's, um, that's encouraging. Uh, yeah. Numbers. So um, for our second heat, event 83, we have, um, gosh, aren't we spoiled? <laughs> Thank you very much. We just yeah. had a nice you might not hear much of us late <laughs> soon because we've just had coffees delivered and no, we'll get into that. coffee is a big part of yeah. life <laughs> these days. <laughs> so um, in lane one from Eastern Bay, we've got Grace Huck, uh, Hine Brooking, uh, from Poverty Bay in lane two, Emma Bell Green uh, from Eastern Bay. And Eastern Bay, gosh, they've got a lot of novices. Maybe they're coming through. They might be worth an interview. Yeah, it's good to see. Uh, Sonia Keeper from Poverty Bay in lane four. Uh, Lindsay Carroll from North Shore in lane five. Uh, Kiwi Campbell from Poverty Bay in lane six. Uh, Georgia Hamblin. Did we get a start there? Oh, it was a false start, was it? Oh, anyway, Georgia Hamblin from Poverty Bay in lane seven, and Christina Hawk, um, North Shore, for the second heat of novice. I think I don't think that would be an intentional false start, John. I, that would just be a little bit of inexperience. Might have heard a little 
something drop down there, it's time to go. Give them the benefit of the doubt. So we're away. I'll still say this is their first start. So just looking down here, Hene Brooking from Poverty Bay in lane two going very well. Just on her left also, Eastern Bay, Grace Hark going also very well. I think they're all doing extremely well, actually, because over the far <laughs> side, when they spread it like this, here we go again. Yeah. You're right, it drift out there, eh? And, and we do see that, um, you know, Hene Brooking looking... Very impressive too in, in lane two, but away from her. So, and uh, even in lane eight, we've got uh, Christina Hawk and we've got Georgina Hamblin just inside, but two in from Hawk is Campbell. So, Kiwi Campbell, Christina Hawk, and Hine Brooking. Brooking looks to have dropped off the pace a wee bit now, or probably keeping her pace, but the action is happening away to her right, far right. In fact, as they come through, it's clearly those two outside, or the, the six and eight. It's Kiwi Campbell and Christina Hawke. One's from Poverty Bay and one's from North Shore. Poverty Bay on lane six on the inside, the red and white, of course. Big, slow and powerful stroke and slightly faster rotation. You'll notice in uh, Christina Hawke, and it's working for her too. So there's some effort going to go in over this last uh, 75 metres or so. Certainly Kiwi Campbell in lane six. Eyes fixed on that finishing line and knowing full well she'll be able to sense that out to her right is Christina Hawke, but now she's... A good boat length clear, a good boat length, two boat lengths clear, and finishes strongly to take this particular race, the Novice Women's K1500 second heat. So first is Campbell, second is Hawke, and uh, in lane seven was Georgina Hamblin, and then the other finishers on this side were Grace Hark and Hine Brooking, the early leader.
So a great start here. This is the final, folks. This is the under-16 men's K1500. We just haven't got their, uh, the race plan at present, but we'll have that to you momentarily. But uh, certainly, lane two going very, very well. Looks like the colours of Poverty Bay. Is it? No. Thank you, John. It's North Shore, Jake Botha. In lane two, going very, very well. Just also here, Caden Thrupp from Piers from Poverty Bay. Lane one, going very well in the white boat. And over the far side, Dane Worcester from Bay of Plenty in the white boat, going very, very well indeed. So I'll give it to these three guys who are going to come up through the 250 first as they pass that boy line. So at the moment, it's a three-horse race. Lanes one, two, and eight. The others seem to have dropped back, but this is a this is the final. This is the A final of the under sixteen men's. What an, what an advantage to Thrupp and Borta to be side by side. Hey, they can work off each other, and it looks as though Borta from North Shore is just holding it together better. But you see the excellent speed being generated by Caden Thrupp from Poverty Bay in Lane One. But way over there, as you said, Dane Worcester from Bay of Plenty. So those three are going to battle out for the first three placings. Yeah, it's very lonely out there, and I think it's showing through now. These two on the inside here from North Shore and Poverty Bay, they um, are egging one another on. Oh, just a steady stroke there from uh, Jake Bortha. Thrupp, look at him yeah. wind into it. Thrupp senses that this race could be his. He's driving really hard. Does he have his nose in front, or will Jake Borta hold him off? I think Borta looks across to see where any opposition is. He knows he now has this, and he... Oh, big cruise to the line. That's a dangerous <laughs> one, Jake. <laughs> but he takes the title, and uh, fast-finishing Caden Thrupp from Poverty Bay is second. And uh, Dane Wooster over in lane eight from Bay of Plenty will be in third place. Ooh, that was just a little bit of inexperience from uh, Jake. Just yeah. thought, thought he had, oh, this got to be, the, maybe he wished it. <laughs> Can this be the finish line, please? So you always race through, in actual fact, it's those uh, imaginary line between the two orange ones. So if you race to the luminous green ones, you'll be well and truly through the line. So well done. Coach will probably have a wee word to you over that, so... You got that in your gold medal in your back pocket. Well done, Jake. <laughs> so, 12 and under. I don't think we've ever commentated no. on, a, on a 12 and under age group. Not this year, and we no. certainly did a few last yeah. season, so that's good that they're continuing to pump through the youngsters. So we've just been informed that was a novice race. So that was, uh, what, the... Oh, here we go. Get okay, the right page. sorry, guys. So that was, um, we had that totally out of order as we raced to get the information to you. But we're now on to, we'll see if we get the same result out of this. So the under-16 men's, that's, that's now. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Here we go, which stands to reason... Well, we just bit, leave it to yeah. see if we get the same result. But certainly in lane four, Riley Scott has um, in charge at the moment from Lewis Monk of Arawa. Yeah, this looks more like a 16 and under. Mm. And I, I looked at who I called was Jake Borta before, and I thought he's that's a sizable under 16 <laughs> competitor. So Caden Thrupp in one, Jake Borta in two. And in three, it's Ben Tullock. So Riley Scott and Lewis Monk, they are in charge in lanes four and five. And it'll be between them 
for this title of the 16 and under men's K1 500. Gosh, nobody's, nobody's giving up here. You can just even towards the back of the field, everybody's gunning it. Oh, this is a close finish here between lanes four and five. Lewis Monk just at the moment from Arawa in five. And it'll stay that way. Lewis Monk will get his nose in now. And in lane four, Riley Scott is in second place. And wow, who's going to get up for third? I think it went to lane, lane six. six. Was it? Lane six was Oliver Hutchinson of Hawke's Bay. That's, that's better. That looks more better. like a 16 <laughs> and under men's K1 500. Our apologies to both these athletes and those who were in that um, event previously, that novice men's. It was no less exciting, though, so well done to you novice men. Sorry about that. So now we've got to work out who won that last one. We'll, we'll line it up. So we reckon Jake Borto won it, but it was, in fact, Bruce Campbell of Northern Bay uh, and Jason Berry of North Shore. And um, then we're not sure. Mm. So we're now uh, up to date, everyone. Thank you for your patience. So and well done, Bruce. And we're pleased that we're not down there amongst you because you'd see how <laughs> embarrassed we really look. I saw the red bib of Poverty Bay. I thought, that's got to be Poverty Bay. When I was reading it, it was North Shore. I went, oh, OK. All right. We better stick to the program. So the, under six, so the next event now is our uh, under 12 event, 86. So under 12 women, we've got uh, no athlete in lane one. We've got Emily from North Shore in lane two, Piper from Eastern Bay in lane three, Willow from Hawke's Bay in lane four, Kate, Katie unaffiliated in lane five. We've got Charlotte from Poverty Bay in lane six. And Amelia from Hawke's Bay in lane seven. So these are the, these are the tiny tackers, 12-year-olds. Could have been some of these might have even been eligible to race in the novice. But no, they've decided they've probably done some racing before. So that could probably disqualifies them out of the novice group, even at the age of 12. So there's uh, two heats of these under 12 women. And we've got a good start coming down the course. Everybody's paddling nice and straight. Yeah. There we go. That's answered my own question. They don't. They don't look like novices even at <laughs> at under twelve. They are all <laughs> all paddling very very well. So maybe just here on the inside. That's Emily Belsham, young Emily from the North Shore Club in Lane Two. Going very very well. And then two over from her, Hawks Bay, Willow Hamilton. Going very well in the red boat. They're all paddling very, very well. Amelia Quartel way out in lane seven. We saw her sister Peyton compete in the 16 and under um, A final, where she finished seventh. So it's a family name to watch out for. Uh, just a continuation of what Hawks Bay are producing at the moment. Here we go, though. This 12 and under K1. It's a just the first of two heats. So I think cutting through the line first was uh, Charlotte Willoughby from lanes out there in lane six in the white boat, Poverty Bay. Gosh, don't they look good for 12 year olds? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, under 12 uh, too, yeah. so goodness knows how old some of them are. She's just steaming down the course. Yep. Look, look who's not letting her go. Coming from uh, lane four, that's Willow. So Willow and so Willow and Charlotte show. This is a good finish too from lane two. That's uh, Emily Belsham. 
nice. All the way yes. wins. So that was the first heat of the under 12 woman being completed now as they're coming through the line. Good news, ladies, as you get to do it all again. In the final, some good racing. Probably see them in the fun events too, the, the club relays. Well Coming done, Katie Harrison in yeah. lane five. So six starters uh, in this heat, and we've got another five lined up for the second heat of the 12 and under women's K1 500. We've got uh, Tolly Baker of Hawke's Bay, Zoe Keeper, Poverty Bay, Abby Turton, Bay of Plenty Paddle Sports, uh, Pippa Randall, Waitara, and Alice McBreety of Hawke's Bay. So another names there that we've seen. Now you haven't taken my pen again, have you, John? I gave you one. <laughs> oh, <there> you <laughs> yeah. We're just crossing. We see, and that's where we folded out because we hadn't crossed out the races. So there we go, back on target now. Just under twelve women's K1 500. Looks like they're all ready to go. I gave you one job to do. Yeah, just one. Like all the umbrellas are still up out there. Must be still raining ever so slightly. That's a good clean start for this second and final heat of the uh, under 12 women's K1 500. No athletes in lanes one or two. So our first athlete that we see closest to us is from the Hawks Bay. That's Tolly Baker. And uh, Poverty Bay is in lane four. Keep up. Looks like she's made a great start. And just like the previous heat, these young ladies are all paddling very, very well down the course. Yes. They'll probably size, uh, you know, size them up. And we, you know, you have friends put, to put them in a, a, a in a team boat, have some fun. You know, just sit there, or even be in these very boats that they're in now. Of course, uh, have some, just and always in a quiet little. Because North Shore is very lucky because it's got a little quarry next door to a little quarry lake. Um, just have a play and always with a team. And of course, you you learn a few safety rules. You how to fall, you know, if you fall out of course and how to right your boat. No. One advantage these uh, younger age groups do, because they're a little smaller in stature, is that they have a very low centre of gravity. So they they can sit in a boat. You think, why don't they fall out? Because uh, they've got very good sense of balance. Oh, it does. Absolutely, it does. So yes, certainly, it looks like Lane Four. She's done well all the way down the course. That's Zoe Keeper from Poverty Bay. Well done, Zoe. Good technique, sitting nice, upright, punching out, pulling back. They were all doing that. Just looks very, very good. We don't want to harp on about it, but at least, you know, if we get our techniques going right, and they get out there and paddle twice, three times a week, then they get to four, five times a week. And of course, they've got, and when they get into that, they're in very, very structured programs. So, coming across the line now, well, young Zoe, well done. Very, very close between lanes seven and five. That was Alice McBreety. 
and uh, Abby Turton. Okay. So I was just watching too through that, that race and even uh, Pippa Randall um, from Waitra who finished uh, you know, in fifth place out of the five but uh, doing everything well. Yeah. Uh, I just I looked at her cap was sort of s just looked to be slipping over her eyes a wee bit. <laughs> um, but uh, that's encouraging for her so you know, she's really done well. So a nice race there, Zoe Keeper. And speaking of caps, we've um, got some branded um, New Zealand canoe racing uh, hoodies and shirts, t-shirts and caps and hats uh, which are available. I think some of you have prepaid uh, for them uh, and they're in the building behind the control tower here in the Don, uh, Don Rowland building, is it? Next door? Yeah. So if you want to get those, they're there, available right throughout the next couple of days. So some really good and, and probably quite nice to have today where it's just a little bit cooler and wet. But anyway, uh, attractive apparel and uh, representing what's happening here this year at Lake Carapero. Mark that one off, would you? <laughs> so we need our under 18 men's semi, semi one with that one. Plenty of splash there as these young men uh, endeavour to make an impact from the start. And Noah Andrews of Waitra in the inside lane has uh, done exactly that. Uh, they're pretty much all in a line apart from when you get right out to the far side into lane eight. Max Colbert looks to have just slipped off the pace from Mana. But they're exploding now as they really wind into it. In lane five, Maya Campbell looking really impressive there. And alongside of him, Matt McKendry of Poverty Bay. So the two Poverty Bay competitors taking it to each other, but there's plenty of others ready to attack. I think the coaching program was the same for all athletes. You won't be making the final unless you go 500 metres at 100%. And they're all doing that. It's still anybody's race. Yes, as you say, John, maybe cutting the 200 metres of the two Poverty Bay athletes. But, boy, we've seen them come through from behind. Yep, Striden, uh, Bryden Story from North Shore in lane three is there or thereabouts, but those two in the middle. That's uh, Maya Campbell, Matt McKendry, Julian De Silva in the blue also starting to appear prominent. But no doubt about it, those two from Poverty Bay have given it everything and they're going to reap the rewards. Brian Storey from Lane 3, North Shore coming through. He, it's a, going to be a fight for third for seven and three. Who's it going to be? Maybe just on the inside here. Got his beanie on. 
keep his head warm. Oh, here we go. Yes, I think I'd give it to him for third spot. Yep. That's lane three. Bryden Story from the North Shore Club. Julian De Silva from Hawke's Bay maybe just got up for fourth. But Poverty Bay one and two. That's Maya Campbell and Matt McKendry. Under 18 men's K1500. Semi-final. Okay, so we see the wind picking up a little bit here now, but at least it's a beautiful little tailwind. So the final for this is at uh, 10.40. So less than an hour away. <laughs> too much time to think about it. But they'll be ready to go. So here we go. Another final in our youngest age group. This is for the under 12 men's. So... Once again, good showing by North Shore, four athletes. So we've got Max Egan from Poverty Bay in lane two. No athlete in lane, way, in lane one. We've got Max Egan, Poverty Bay lane two. Callum Orman from North Shore in lane three. Theo uh, Miners from Waitra in lane four. And North Shore, North Shore, North Shore in lanes five, six, and seven. Ned Zachary Ainsworth, Owen Hawke. And Braden Gow. Probably find that these um, under 12, probably all schoolmates, which is often fun. Good, nice, clean start. For this final, straight final, under 12 men's event 89. And I would just give that perhaps to Max Egan, Poverty Bay in lane two. He's had a flyer. Paddling pretty well for a 12-year-old, yeah, isn't he? Gosh. Just had the binoculars on yeah. him as he, as he started and yeah. very quickly into his work. It'd be interesting to compare the times. You know, the under-14s, he's paddling very, very well. He's time-trialling down the course now. He's left them all in his dust, or in his spray, as it were. And if he wants to do a good time, he's going to have to just... It's going to be all mental for him. Nobody's pushing him. Other than a puff of wind every now and then, perhaps. But Yes. He will, uh, he will want to do a good time, and he hasn't let up, has he? This uh, young Max Egan from Poverty Bay, as he's gone through the 250 mark now, his next focus is to swallow up that green luminous line as he comes up to that now. Only a 200 to go, well and halfway through the race, and he breaks that buoy line. <laughs> and he still hasn't let up. Gosh, he's got one speed. That's flat out. Yep. Let's see if he can last that distance. He looks pretty good. Just His head's going a wee bit. He, yeah. You know, that's a lot that's of effort fatigue. there. And just hope that he hasn't gone out too far but oh, fast, <laughs> but he really has held it together nicely. Look at the distance. That's, that's massive between him and the rest of this under 12 K1 500 team uh, field. Good battle. Oh, he had a little one. look there, but he couldn't see anybody in his vision. Yeah. He had a look around. You're going to get a, probably have to end up seeing the physio if he was to have a look around because it'll be a 180 degree turn. <laughs> so coming up to the line now, from start to finish, well done, young. Ollie Egan, uh, Max Egan, sorry. Straight final. Just watching now to see if he turns around. There he uh, goes. Still can't see anyone. <laughs> well done, Max Egan, who from Poverty Bay, who wins this race. And close between the rest, it was Owen Hawke, Callum Orman. Up comes Braden Gull. Taylor Miners 
And uh, in lane five there, that was Zach Ainsworth, Zachary Ainsworth. So that's impressive. We want to see you guys back here next year. Absolutely. Congratulations to you all. Hop off the water now. Bring your numbers in. Well done. Warm yourselves up. So that was uh, the straight final. Another gold medal to Poverty Bay. Gosh, it'll be interesting to see how the um, clubs are going. That's event 89. So here we are. The under 16. Final. Women's. K under 18. Yeah. Under 18. Final women's. We can get the page right. Event 90. Make sure everything marries up, yes, <laughs> with our programs. We've got Amber Dearness from Poverty Bay in lane one. She's closest to us. Hannah Webb, Poverty Bay, is all coming into the start line now. She's in lane two. Mia Padrut from Waitara in lane three. Poppy Barnes in lane four. Guess who's in lane five? Here we go, Jacqueline Kennedy. Poverty Bay, she's also racing in the under 18s. Uh, Chloe Akui from Ottawa in lane six. Jessica McDonald uh, from Ottawa in lane C seven. Hannah Baxter from Eastern Bay in lane eight. And Hope Duffret from North Shore in lane nine. So young Jacqueline Kennedy, I think uh, in the under 16s, oh a good start. She did a two minute flat. Or thereabouts, if I'm, my memory serves me right, but I'm not gonna trust that. Yes, she did. Yeah, two minutes flat and change. And now she's uh, in the center lane here for the under 18s uh, in lane five. And she is, she Really showing it out here in the white boat. Just on her left, Poppy Barnes from Waitra. So a bit of a grudge match going now. But boy, has uh, Jacqueline got through some racing already today. It's still very close, John. I can't pick it. I think Cut. Barnes is uh, Poppy Barnes in the blue. She's got a slight edge over... Uh, Jacqueline Kennedy, uh, look out wide to uh, Hannah Baxter, who's always been prominent. But that's not much of a turnaround between the under-16 and the under-18, but I think you'll find now that uh, it is um, Jacqueline Kennedy who's taken over. Well, watch them split she that has. line there. Very close, but I think she's got it at the she moment has. over Poppy Barnes. And we know the medal of the, this young lady. Whoa, she's now. not going to give it up from here. Gee. She has really got the bit between her teeth. I just thought maybe when she hits that, that 200 mark, which she did, she kicked big time. And here she goes. She's going to take out the under 16 as well as this under 18. Whoa. Gee. Well, this will have the selectors looking, uh, oh, grinning, won't it? Because potentially oh, this is a really outstanding youngster, winning the under 16 and now convincingly winning the under 18 by two boat lengths over Poppy Barnes, who's been outstanding over the last couple of uh, nationals that we've been to. Uh, she gets up for second, and down here, maybe on the inside, it's going to be Hannah Webb. Hannah Webb gets up to take third place just over uh, Chloe Akoi of Aroa. Oh, excellent work. Well done, Jacqueline Kennedy. There's a name to remember. Taking the under 16s, it'll be interesting to see that time because it's a little puffier wind. Might be a little quicker, perhaps not, but either way, when racing, you just want to get across the line first. But I didn't see her ease up at all in that race, but with such a brilliant pick at the 200. Because just on her left, we had Poppy Barnes that maybe could have spoiled the party. And it was a great race from young Poppy as well. 
So well done, Jacqueline. Two gold medals in that back pocket, the under-16 plus all your team boat stuff. So just confirming that previous race, the 12 and under uh, boys, Max Egan winning it from Owen Hawke and Callum Orman. So Poverty Bay, gold, North Shore, uh, silver and bronze. And we'll let you know confirmation of that last race as soon as it comes through. Right, we've got some the big boys racing now. St still over the 500 distance. So we've got a B final coming up for the open and under 23 men. So uh, this will be an interesting race. Neil Gard from Ottawa in lane one. Andrew Roy, North Shore in lane two. Logan Ferguson from Karapiro in lane three. Gene Prato from North Shore in four. Liam Lace, Wanganui in five. He was uh, just unlucky to miss out in the A final, I think, uh, Liam. Sam Lees, North Shore in six. Danny Morrison in lane seven. Michael Easterhausen from North Shore in eight. And Ben Nichols from Ottawa, way over there in lane nine. They're in. This is the B final. Good little curtain raiser for our A final coming up. Oh, we got a false start here. False start, lane two. We'll just. Get underway now, this uh, latest of our events. And uh, just notice down here, uh, the wind has picked up quite considerably. So that's going to affect performances and times, obviously. But wow, we've got a blistering start from second from the inside. That's an absolute flyer from Andrew Roy of North Shore. Oh gosh, that's a good boat length advantage he has. Yeah, he was very unlucky to... Um just miss out on the A final. I think he just got pipped there in his uh, in his semi. But he has something to prove. Yeah, he settles down nicely now. Uh, Two hundred to go. I don't want to settle down too too much because Logan Ferguson is alongside of him and now comes up to join him, and now probably comes up to whip past him as he winds up and finds another gear. So it's not Andrew Roy leading now, it's Logan Ferguson. And Roy might just have blown it at the moment as he will glance across to his right and see other faster finishes, but none faster than Logan Ferguson. So Ferguson from Liam Lace of Whanganui. Yep, our early leader, Andrew Roy, just being swamped here as they all come through now. So we'll give it to Logan Ferguson, lane three, coming strong. Oh, nice big kick here, lane four. I think he's going to come up. He's, oh, five saw him, but has he got the momentum? He might just have the momentum to key. He has, oh, just running out of, running out of the meters there, lane four. Had a great kick. So Liam Lace held uh, Gene Prato off, and Lace finishes second behind Ferguson and Prato in third place. That's the B final. 
men's open and under 23 K1 500. Right, John, here's the biggie. Yep, the A final. There will be a few nerves amongst the, the boys in this one. So we've got Joshua Bull from North Shore in lane one for this uh, open and under 23 men's K1 500. We've got Joshua Bull in North Shore, Casey Nataki from North Shore in lane two, Quade Thompson, Poverty Bay in lane three, James Monroe. Watch this guy fly out of the start uh, in lane four. And then on his right, we've got Kalani Gilbertson from North Shore in lane five, Thomas McGibbon from Ottawa in lane seven, Zach Firkins, Poverty Bay uh, in lane seven, Max Brown, and uh, in lane eight, and Ashton Dreiser, who made it through. So uh, there's some big names in this one. Oh, just looking at the uh, times by Jackie. Okay, so she did a 202 for her uh, win in the under 18s and a two flat for her win in the under 16. And I think that's pretty fair though, John. Yeah. She's been racing a lot, a little bit windier, a little bit choppier. Um, so it's very consistent though. That's pretty impressive. Yes. Running, I think so, yeah. yeah. So Kennedy confirmed with 202. Uh, Poppy Barnes of Waitra second and Hannah Webb of Poverty Bay third. That was the 18 and under women's K1 500. That'll be the, putting a big smile on the Poverty Bay team. Well, Quade Thompson's certainly barred up for this, isn't he? He's, he uh, is. he's enjoyed it. He's fist pumped. He's um, enjoyed his victory so far. James Monroe started with the thousand and uh, Went okay in that, but he prefers these shorter distances and has looked good so far as we see the oh, um, double hooter. I'll come back for the false start. So uh, the uh, first false start, they'll name, we can't, I haven't picked out who that is yet, but um, if anybody, any athlete false starts now, you're out. So just coming through lane three, Quade Thompson, as you said, John, he's uh, eager to get this one to the to do the double, he took out the thousand quite convincingly, and he'll want this. So, just a little little bit of nerves there. He's an old wily fox. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it won't be nerves, yeah. it'll just be he wants to get an edge, doesn't yeah. he, right from the start. Yeah. So, ball in lane one, looks settled, Nataki in two. Uh, Thompson with the false start on his head, but won't affect him if he doesn't, if there's another false start and it's not him, he's safe. <laughs> Monroe and four, Gilbertson and five. I like the look of those three, four and five. We'll watch those from the start. Thompson, Monroe, Gilbertson. And then of course, all the rest are certainly capable of winning this. Here we go. That's a better clean start. And they're winding up, and as expected, James Monroe, lane four. Gosh, he can wind out of the blocks. Lane one also, Joshua Bull from North Shore doing very well in the blue boat. But still very, very early to see here. I've got John on the binoculars. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> actually, I'm look, I looked at Monroe in the orange uh, boat, and next to him on his, on his right, that's Gilbertson. And over there, Max Brown, who is flying in the red boat, Max Brown from Wanganui, Zach Firkins, uh, sorry, that's Zach Firkins, and right on the far side, Ashton Riser as well. So they're all giving it plenty. There's not much in them. But uh, Munro started brilliantly, so he's yes. four in. Thompson is on his inside, but Munro and Gilbertson 
Look to be the two at the moment. And here comes Kalani Gilbertson. Here he comes, those big, long, strong levers. Because he's a strapping laddie. I was looking at him. He's got some big arms. He's coming through now. He's walking past Monroe, the early, yep. the early leader. Oh, yeah. He's got this now, and I don't think he's going to let this go. But look, here comes Quade Thompson. Yeah. Here comes Quade Thompson. Going to have something to say about this. Had an early false start, and they all come past the early leader now, James Monroe. But no, big kick here, lane five. He can focus on the finish. Ten strokes, and he's home. Quade Thompson, McGibbon. five for second. And third. McGibbon and lane six from Ottawa. Might even get up for second. Close between he and Thompson for second and third, but undoubtedly the winner, Kalani Gilbertson. Nicely judged race. He leans over in his boat and sucks up the big ones because he had to give it everything. He scorched past uh, James Monroe and took the lead, but it wasn't comfortable for him. He knew and he would sense that McGibbon was coming. He knew that Quade Thompson was there. But eventually, when they came across the line, it was a good half boat length advantage. So the title holder for 2024, the open and under 23 men's 500, is Kalani Gilbertson of North Shore. Yeah, he, uh, once he gets that boat up and going, those big levers coming out, and I saw that, I thought, I love the look of this, the run of that boat. That was just excellent work. So, congratulations, Kalani. J oh, James Monroe, he's going to be dangerous over the 200 distance, I think, John. Yeah. There's no, he's, uh, nobody's touching him. He's just coming into that, what, 300? And the, the old, as we say, the piano falls out of the sky. You don't know why or how. It's yeah. just, uh, you just got nothing there. And that uh, shows the work, good endurance work. It'll be interesting to see the time here. I think it'd be uh, a good sub 145. Logan, Logan Ferguson won that previous one, the B final, and 149 yeah. from Liam Lace and Jean Prato. Yeah. So I think this was definitely quicker, quicker than, than that. that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But wasn't that a huge finish? Oh, there's another race happening. Good heavens. So this is uh, another final um, of our open and under 23 woman. Well, we've been celebrating that. So um, we'll look. We've got uh, Madison Garrett in lane one from Ottawa. Erin Demolipasis from North Shore in lane two. Samalulu Clifton in lane three. Julia Padrut in lane four. Natasha McGiven from Ottawa in lane five. Emma Kemp in lane six. Chrissy Tate in lane seven from the North Shore Club. Jessica Cleghorn in lane eight. And Isla Joyce in lane nine. And just like the previous race, still very, very early. No quarter given from any athlete. Maybe, just maybe here on the inside, Madison Garrett from Ottawa looking very good. And four over from her in the uh, red boat, Julia Pedru, Natasha McGibbon. I don't know. I think it may be those two in the centre now just coming through. Oh, you listen to the crowd. <laughs> they found their voice, John, even this with it. Good to hear. So uh, lane, yeah, lanes four and five, but not much in it. Lane four looks to just have it. That's uh, Padrut, but now look at the gap close almost as I open my mouth. <laughs> Up came Natasha McGibbon from Arawa in lane five. She's in the blue boat. On the inside, Julia Padrut in the red. Those two are battling it out, but also scorching up Emma Kemp from Mana over in the black boat. She has a yellow vest on. She'll be in third place. This is tight. This is lanes four and five, Padrut and McGibbon. Padrut in the red. McGibbon in the blue. Will the red boat just oh. hold that low? A nose, a nose. It is the surge at the line that does it for Julia Padrut from Natasha McGibbon and Emma Kemp. And Samalula Clifton, it's going to be close for first and second and very close between third and fourth. Whoa. 
We've got some <laughs> the last few races have been very exciting. <laughs> well, they're finals, and you'd hope that they would be. Hey, eh? yeah. that was that was great stuff. Very good. Well done, ladies. We'll have to. Sorry, we can't call that up here because um, we could name somebody, um, and it could quite be the opposite athlete. So um, we'll wait till we get the uh, official results of that one, John. I think. But here we go. Another final. This is uh, C-Class, Event 94. This is uh, the C2. Gosh, it wasn't so long ago I only saw a C1. Now we're seeing C2s on our waters. So uh, it's good to see the canoe class. So, of course, most of these events are called the uh, Canoe and Kayak Nationals or the Kayak and Canoe Nationals. So strictly speaking, the majority of the boats you see out here are the kayaks. And, of course, um, you sit down into them with the spray decks. And then, of course, the C-Class, or the canoes, are the big open ones where they have people on one knee. And they are uh, all stroking, unlike the waka armor that uh, we often see where we can do a few strokes, maybe 15, anywhere between 15 and 20 on one side, and then we change over to the other so we get a bit of a balance. These uh, guys always stay on the one side. So uh, as they... In the infancy of their sport, they'll pick it up whether they prefer left or right, pretty much whether they're left-handed or right-handed. They'll have a bias towards one side, not the other. It looks like we've got a good clean start as they're coming down the course. And so, of course, in the pairing to keep everything going straight, one will be on one side of the boat, as we see, and the other on the other side. In the uh, fours, we could uh, have alternative, or the middle guys could often be uh, seen uh, paddling on the same side together. So just paddling down the course, nice and gently here. First place getters, don't they look good? Timing is everything in these water sports. Yeah. Just the time's coming through now. Well done, Kalani Gilbertson, 141, flying home. I thought that would be a good sub 145. <laughs> yeah, take well, another four well, seconds off well, that. Even McGibbon and Qu Thompson yes. and, and Ricer and Ferkins all went under 145. So McGibbon a 142 and Thompson uh, only fractionally behind him. So good times in these conditions. Kalani Gilbertson, the winner and title holder now for the open and under 23 men's K1 500. And I think uh, if I'm right... Kalani was racing in the under-23 category, so he's taken out the open category as well. I wonder if he allowed both. Or it's one or the other. Yeah, yeah. So the other guys will be open. No, you go for the under-23. I'm taking <laughs> the open. So Quaid uh, Thompson will be probably hoping that that's the case. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm bit vexed over that, so maybe we'll get uh, an the official record. I'm sure he would be eligible to take both. So coming down here, C2, don't they look great? In lane four, with the yellow bibs on from Mana, that's uh, Lee and Schwerza. And we've got North Shore out there, still doing okay. Just, I think they're very much learning as you see them paddling on both sides. Maybe a little bit of coaching from a specialist C-class. So well done to Mana. It's a very technical boat. It's quite good, you know, watching it at the Olympics and seeing how competent and uh, they make it look easy, though, they don't they? Make they? It look easy. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's that. Yeah. Just notice, you know. One knee, so kneeling yep. basically, and the lunge forward as they take their whole upper body forward and pull back. And as you talked yeah. about the J stroke, you know, yeah. to keep them balanced, um, it's power and precision. Gosh, yeah, to and totally different to kayak, uh, your basic kayak, isn't it? But yes, gee, there, and it's great to watch. So when they're, you know, moving forward, they're mo the fluidity of that movement of moving forward, because you don't want these big, especially these big boys, oh. uh, the, otherwise the boat's bouncing up and down, and that's a lot of momentum lost, a lot of energy lost, so they actually move forward. 
people, big lads, and they, and they coached into that because they don't want the bow of their boat bobbing up and down. And that's lost energy. And you see how, how they do it, and that is just years and years of training. They're just staying in their lane here. You know what? North Shore, well done. You're going to might not look pretty, but that's going to be a silver medal for them. Could be the the one that counts to to be top club. They saying that they might be DQ'd now, getting out of their lanes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Show oh dear. Shortcut to the finish yeah, line. Shortcut to the finish line, and I think that's probably what will happen. Uh, unfortunately, after coming all the way down the course, probably in their lanes, just finishing outside their lane, they may have a DQ next door to them. Never mind. It's all learning. But uh, well done, that Mana crew of Lee and Schwartz are looking very, very good indeed. So Masters men, there'll be a, a Masters woman coming up here, John, the K2500, event 40, uh, event 95. So we've got uh, Orman and Hawk from North Shore in lane three, Campbell and Keeper from Poverty Bay in lane four, and Vaughan and Carroll, again, another North Shore pairing for these Masters women, K2500. So they're away nicely. Yeah, they're, they're away nicely. A uh, uh, bit of a uh, difference between <laughs> out of the blocks <laughs> from uh, the open and under 23 men. We just saw a shower of spray, very genteel, uh, away from the, the start, the, these ladies. But they're doing it, they're looking good. See that almost arrow head at the moment now of Poverty Bay. That's Campbell and Keeper in front. Uh, North Shore on the either side of them. On the inside, in lane three, it's Orman and Hawk, and then uh, Vaughan and Carroll on the right. So this is event number 95. We go through to uh, 154 today. Um, Lunch pops up at some time. We've got lunch and prize giving after the senior mixed relay uh, at uh, 11.30. So that's when you have to be ready for your prize giving. And uh, then we'll get into the shorter events. I think the pontoon gets moved and you have your lunch and get involved in the prize giving <coughs> and prepare for another excellent session this afternoon. It looks like a um, little pairing here of Poverty Bay, Campbell and Kepper. Gently does it as they come down the course. Doesn't look like they're in, in a K2 class. This is uh, probably a little bit more stability for these ladies. Now look on the inside here, John, North Shore, Orman, Hawk. A little bit of a kick coming here from these ladies. Well, we saw uh, Christina Hawke in the novice, so we've got yeah. some novices involved here um, in that uh, North Shore club. Christina Hawke was uh, involved in that. And I think Sonia Keeper from uh, Poverty Bay as well. So Yes. And, and Kiwi Campbell. So that, that one of the combinations, in fact, the combination that's taking it now are both novice athletes, and they get up to win the Masters final. <laughs> I so tell that's you pretty what, good. That was a good, honest through the line punch through the line so well done yeah so that was the uh, novices coming up popping in probably mums of the, the kids in the in the uh well if we're going to go all the way to cut a puree we might as well race yeah <laughs> and look at that you've just won your club a gold medal which all adds to the club points so well done to the mums yep to sonia keeper and uh, kiwi campbell from poverty bay not only perform well in the Masters, uh, in the Novice, but also winning the Masters ahead of the two North Shore clubs, which also had uh, some uh, novices in there. Uh, Lindsay Carroll, for example, from North Shore. Yeah. Making sure in the prize giving, when they come on the dice, that they get that photo. Yeah. Put that pride and joy in the club. How cool is that? You come to the Nationals and you you know... They've obviously done some training looking at that, but they've done their novice races, and now we're uh, 
taking a gold medal home. Well, just looking at them uh, close yeah. up on the screen here and there, uh, big smiles all yeah. around. Well done. And winning that fantastic, winning the Masters gold and yeah. uh, showing us how good you were in the novices as well. They could have paddled well backwards too by the looks yeah, of things. Yeah. I don't, not the first time in a boat. Yeah. It's just it's, um, this blue line on the outside here. It just floats to the surface. And, of course, the rudders, you don't want to get the rudders caught on that. So... We try to do a shortcut through and we go, uh oh, on go the brakes. Yeah. So well done, Poverty Bay. Well done, North Shore. Next up, another final, the 14 and under. Oh, here we go. K2 500. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be exciting. We've seen all the racing of this. Gosh, just an hour ago, they were doing the heats, weren't they? Yep. So a couple from Hawke's Bay um, in lane one and in lane four. Uh, Poverty Bay have uh, the combination in lane two, Eastern Bay in three. Ottawa in five, uh, North Shore take up the next three, that's six, seven and eight, and Waitara in lane nine. So under 14, and we've seen such an impact being made by the, the young Hawke's Bay paddlers, so we'll see what they do here. We've got them in lane one and in lane four, and in lane four you can see that they're prominent already. Outside of them, though, Punea yeah. and Samanoff. Well, they're two who have really been... Uh, on the target, on the money throughout so far. They're in lane five and leading. So just looking at the tempo here from that um, Christchurch pairing of Ottawa, nice and long, maybe just a little bit out. Back paddlers is uh, in the number two seat, a little bit of timing, but generally pretty good. But look at the tempo, the crew on their left yeah. from Hawke's Bay. So we've got to somehow, a little bit of, coaching be able to get that energy through the water because they have got a good tempo going but they just seem to be dabbing their paddles in the water and not pulling back just imagine if we could just slow that technique up a bit but it's going to be close between them oh and the crew second from out there that's Lomax and Sun from North Shore and Lane 8 also doing very very well so we'll give it to those three crews but still winding up, <laughs> looks like a old grandfather clock with its spring come undone. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Hawke's Bay, Egan and McBretty from lane four have kept that nice form. And while they might oh. be generated, oh, we just speak too soon, but they regather nicely, <laughs> very quickly. Um, but they've just kept it together, and that's given them a momentum, constant and consistent momentum to force their way past uh, the uh, Pernaya Semenov combination from Arawa, who are now just uh, sensing that maybe someone else might challenge them for a second. Umans and Hills over in lane seven. The line comes quickly enough, though, for Egan and McBritty from Hawke's Bay. That's a good title them for, for them, 14 and under. Per Arawa second, and uh, North Shore third. That was an excellent view down there as we see the last of the teams coming in. Uh, lane two, that's Kinsella and Wainohu. And uh, now is Tasker and Hamlet, the younger combination from Hawke's Bay. But looking down the field, you could see the different form that was there, wasn't mm. it? And that Hawke's Bay crew just yeah. pretty much kept it together, but weren't generating as much pace as the, the Arawa team, but which were out of yes. sync a little bit. So I think... Uh, if they still at, stay at under 14, if we're reading these ne names out next year, John, they're going to yeah. be flying down yeah. the course. Because just I think with uh, two, three, four sessions maybe, we're not going to worry about speed, boys. We're just going to learn to lengthen our stroke. And you could put a good exercise that we often do is uh, blindfold. It's very scary, but the, in a team boat. And you just listen. And it's just good to lengthening out the stroke. So we'll just do a few sessions on this. Strokes, I think, once they, they get because I certainly look like they've got the, the energy and the power there. But hey, we still cross the line, can't take it away from them. Great win there. So, what's our next event now? The under 18 men's K1 500. Here we go. This is a final. And uh, quickly looking through this list, we've got some deserving names to be on here. This is going to be flying down the course for these under-18 men's K1 500 metre. This is the A final, closest to us. Poverty Bay, Matt McKendry in lane one. Lewis Monk, been having a busy morning already from the Ottawa Canoe Club in lane two. 
Kaya Gilbertson, North Shore in lane three. Tiago Chamberlain from Ottawa in lane four. Brother Dylan Monk uh, from Ottawa in five. Maxwell Kennedy, Poverty Bay in lane six. Liam Rogers from Ottawa in lane seven. Maya Campbell from Poverty Bay in lane eight. And Bryden Story, North Shore in lane nine. So we've got one, two, three Ottawa boys here. Well done. No wonder they look flying in that in that um, under 18 K4, John. Yeah. And Lewis, oh, uh, who's yeah. in lane two, won the under 16 yeah. earlier on. Yeah. So he's uh, looking for a double up, as we saw from Jacqueline Kennedy. So. And so we've got two Poverty Bays and two North Shores. So no wonder those under 18 K4s yeah. and the K2s were flying. So uh, when we see uh, all those engines in the uh, under-18 men's K1-500. Just they're lining up into the starter's hands, due to go at 10.40. We're ba running bang on time. That'll keep Karen happy. Good clean start for this under 80 men's K1 500. And it's a shower of spray straight out. Five over. Who is that? Dylan Monk from Ottawa looking very, very strong. Also in the white, three over. Kaya Gilbertson, North Shore. He's also going very well. And just like his brother, huge lad, big boy. He'll get those levers up and going. Maybe have to sacrifice something at the start to get out. But once he gets up and going, we're going to see him probably moving through the field. And just as I'm saying that, it looks like he's doing exactly that. Chamberlain and four. So look at that now. Yeah, Gilbertson and three. Chamberlain and four. And Dylan Monk and five. They're sorting themselves out. So, so, wow, well, this will be a stunner, I think. A great finish coming up, Mac. Yeah, so Big Brother's just taken out the open and under 23's uh, K1 500. But I know these lads, what you can do, I can do better. Look at Kaya coming down now in lane three. He's just, he won't, I don't think he's going to lose that from here. He's very strong. They've, these lads have done a lot of training across the Tasman, across here. But here we go, 200, a great kick, great kick coming from lane four, Tiger Chain, Tiger Get this right, John. Tiago Chamberlain. Chamberlain. yeah. Yes. But in 5-2, Dylan Monk. But you're right. Gilbertson is holding it. He's holding it together really well out of lane three. North Shores, Kaya Gilbertson. The Gilbertson name sticks around, gets another gold medal. Four and five. That's Tiago Chamberlain and Dylan Monk. Oh, I Ooh. don't know. Great finish. Pushing to the line from Dylan Monk. Might have got him there. We're just going to have another wee look on our screen here as we get this delayed live streaming coming through. And um, will that help us? I don't know. But definitely uh, Gilbertson wins it from lane three. It'll be interesting to see his times compared to his big brother. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's, uh, he may be sitting around the uh, 145. But that's a good kick coming home. They had a go at him, John. Yeah, the other The did. minor placings, they said, no, no. Now, certainly by a good clear boat length, or maybe just the outside. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Monk over yeah. Chamberlain. We'll leave that to the officials, but unofficially, we'll just give it to Monk over Chamberlain. So, Kaya Gilbertson, North Shore, add to their titles here at the 2024 National Champs. And uh, Kaya Gilbertson acknowledges uh, the congratulations of uh, his fellow competitors. Good racing. Gosh, oh, next year, what do we get out of these? Oh, you know, the, it's so encouraging, isn't it? Yeah. Under 18s, under 16s coming through. So that's event number 97. And we go into a straight final next, and it's uh, the Masters Men's K4 500 with North Shore in lane four, Whitera in lane five, and Hawke's Bay 
in lane six, Masters Men's K4, straight final. So I see Paul Randall. He used to be racing for Whitra, so he must have moved over. Good to see him, though. You would have been, yeah, we'll take it. He uh, used to race for the Whitra Club. So we've got North Shore, Garth Spencer, Andy Logue. Yeah, Born Red. <laughs> that's Corn Reed yeah. sleeps there. Yeah, Gosh, so, mold. Yeah, so just on paper, they've got a few good engines like that. Garth Spencer, he might have won a few gold medals in his K1. And then uh, looking at the Whitra Club, Troy Burbage, he did well yesterday. O'Grady, Barnes, and then of course Hawks Bay, Mold, Moorish, Randall. Maybe just on paper, North Shore. And they're yeah. closest to us in lane four. Well, Carl Barnes out of White, yeah. he won the yeah the right the uh, thirty-five to forty-four yeah. title. So these guys have got great experience. Of course, you could just slip them out from one boat into another. They'll uh, they'll perform well no matter what K four and a good clean start. Not too much of a shower of spray to be expected. <laughs> we'll just. We don't want to pull any muscles, particularly in this cold, but yeah, I was, uh, it looks like in the early stages, closest to us, Lane Four, the North Shore Quartet of Simpkin, Spencer, Logan, Reed. Yeah, well, yesterday you might remember the Masters 45 to 54 race. Um, Spencer won it, the gold medal. Reed got second and Logue third, so they're all on this boat <laughs> together, along with Simpkin, so um, not a bad lineup. Yeah, you know, just looking at the uh, the boat on their right now, they're just finding their straps. They are just finding their straps. Be interesting uh, to see these guys coming down the thousand. No, no, John, don't be silly. Five hundred is more than yeah, enough yeah. for us. It <laughs> seems like a thousand. <laughs> yeah, but here they go. They look great. They they still know what to do. Good to see Troy Burbage out there. But uh, by a good, clear boat length. Masters men, K4. Another gold medal. They're going to the very strong North Shore Club. White Trap coming up for uh, home for a good silver medal. And coming in third over there, the Hawks play. That will pick up. We way behind, but hey, we're out there. That's a that's a bronze medal and more points to the club. Yes, half of them have probably cycled to Hamilton <laughs> and back this morning <laughs> just to warm up. Yeah. So what was that event? Ninety nine. So here's our novices because we had two heats of those. So now we've got our uh, final A, eh? and I think we might see in here. Um, the pairing that won the uh, Masters woman. So they've got to ditch their uh, K2 straight back into a K1. They're probably thinking now, gosh, there's a lot to this racing unit <laughs> out of the boats. And, yeah. But aren't oh, they doing gosh, well? Gosh, yeah, yeah, I see Christina yeah. Hawkes there and yeah. Kiwi Campbell is there. So those yeah. are some of and those who. Poverty Bay. Yep. So um, Lily Van Amid of Eastside, uh, Georgia Hamblin of Poverty Bay. Uh, Chatham Moitara from Poverty Bay, Kiwi Campbell as Poverty Bay as well. Also uh, from Poverty Bay is uh, Brooking Hapu, uh, Christina Hawke there in lane six, and Brooke Conover from both from North Shore. Then Hine Brooking of Poverty Bay and Grace Hark of Eastern Bay. Oh, I love this. This is good, isn't it? We've yeah. seen some of them in novice, yes. then masters, and. Um, Back into the novice. Good showing again. by Poverty Bay. What, yeah. Five of them, is it? One, yeah. two, three, four, five. Five from Poverty Bay and the novices. So they're still blooding a lot of, <laughs> a lot of new athletes in all age groups. Good to see. For this uh, event to go at 10.50. Uh, Event 99, so just a couple of minutes.
So the novice women, K1 500, and it's underway, the final with, uh, we have that east side paddler in lane one. Lily has started very well, but most of that action again is coming from those centre lanes as you would anticipate. And lanes four and five, that's Kiwi Campbell of Poverty Bay. Uh, Hapu Brooking in lane five, also from Poverty Bay. They're setting the pace nicely. As we mentioned, some of these have been in the Masters as well and won, but novice, so first year here, and holding it together as the conditions become a little bit more tricky. Just seeing uh, lane four, Kiwi Campbell there, just a couple of support strokes, but <laughs> didn't lose any uh, ground on that. Just beautiful technique coming down. We've got this. If we, I can, she's probably thinking to herself, like, oh, I can just hold this. I've got me another. There's three gold medals in the back pocket in about as many minutes. But next to her is uh, Kairahi Brooking Hapu, a club mate. They've uh, joined together. They know each other very well. And there's no doubt there'll be a little bit of feeling out there. As Kiwi Campbell, though, is still in front, out in lane four. Well spread field. Right now, see over on the far side from Eastern Bay, Grace Hark, also a newcomer. And the white inside of her is Hine Brooking from Poverty Bay. Those Poverty Bay athletes are really turning it on here, but none more so than Kiwi Campbell in lane four. She's going to win this very comfortably, but if you can pick, Mac, the uh, second and third from here, I'll probably give you that bag of crisps <laughs> that have just arrived. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's going to be very, very close, but I'm, I will probably just give it to the other Poverty Bay athlete there in lane five. Okay. Yeah. So Brooking Harpu, you're picking. Yeah. What and about um, Hine Brooking over on the far side on the no, blue? Do you think, think she'll close the gap or not? No, no, she's got this. Gee, look at that determination. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. I have it. I've got it. Well done. Excellent racing, but over, yes, over in the far side, lane eight. In the blue boat. Is that Poverty Bay again? Yep, yep. I think they got one, two, and three. One, two, and three. That's the second time we've seen that. So Kiwi Campbell, um, Brooking Harpu, and uh, Hine Brooking. Well done. the medals Poverty in the uh, novice <laughs> women's K1. Gosh, let's uh, put the club points through the roof just in the last half hour. Excellent racing there for Poverty Bay. I think somebody's going to have some bragging rights on the way yeah. home here. Have a look at them as they come yeah. back, actually. So you'll see the big smiles on the faces and yeah. <laughs> a little bit of yeah. finger pointing. Yeah. My turn this time. Yeah, well, uh, guess what, ladies? You're definitely out of the novices for next year. <laughs> so well done. Well, yeah, just inspirational. I just it love is. this. As we roll into our next race, so uh, is it event 100? 100 races down. Piper Roland of Eastern Bay, this is 12 and under, K1500. Um, Abby Turton, Bay of Plenty, Willow Hamilton from Hawke's Bay, Zoe Keeper in lane four, uh, Charlotte Willoughby, then Alice McBreety, obviously Hawke's Bay, we've seen so much of the McBreeties. Um, Emily uh, Belsham from North Shore is over there in lane seven and she's looking good. Uh, Tolly Baker from Hawke's Bay and uh, Amelia Quartel. So lane three, that's Willow Hamilton of Hawke's Bay. And two out from her, Charlotte Willoughby of Poverty Bay. Now the two that have made the first impression here, lanes three and five, Willow Hamilton and the red boat from Hawke's Bay Kayak Racing Club. Twelve and under, are these youngsters. It's just, uh, John, you know, where we have these... Uh the top of the sport, which the racing we just saw uh, with Kalani Gilbertson winning, the yeah, open men and under 23. Yes, we love to watch that, you know, because uh, it's showing the athletes getting to the top of the game. But hey, looking out here 
at a full nine lane final of the under 12s and case in point, those uh, races that we've just had previous to this, they're still, to me, <laughs> just as exciting to watch. Coming down here, I mean, this is so very close between these two athletes in the uh, pink boat here, Willow and Charlotte, for these uh, under-12 women. They've raced one another now over and over again. But yeah, just... And then just hovering in between yeah. those two. You see Zoe Keeper from Poverty Bay. Very fast, low stroke. She can see what impression she's making. But now you see uh, Hamilton is in second place behind Willoughby, so nothing much has changed. But all the other athletes in this field have not lost total contact. They've no. kept their form well. But no Certainly doubt about... Oh, she's just wanting... Oh, big. I think she's got a little run on here now coming home. She goes, come on, finish line, where are you? And through she goes, and well-deserved, probably from start to finish, and never once giving up. Lane three from Hawke's Bay, Young Willow. Oh, excellent racing from these under-12 women. And good hearing the, che the cheering and the dancing from the fans, your teammates. Hawks yeah. Bay, yeah, Hawks Bay, and then um, silver and bronze to Poverty Bay through Willoughby and Keeper. So Willow Hamilton from Hawks Bay, Charlotte Willoughby from Poverty Bay, and Zoe Keeper from Poverty Bay, and North Shore's Emily Belsham was in fourth place. That's yeah. 12 and under. Always struggle with 12 and under women, you know. <laughs> but young, young women... Doing it well. And lots of younger women down here watching too. Some A yeah. couple of young girls down there I can see enjoying themselves and cheering, ready to cheer on perhaps our older sister as she comes home. And remember the numbers, everyone. We don't want to get to that stage where we've uh, run out of numbers, but make sure managers and uh, those responsible people within the clubs uh, that the numbers are returned to make sure that we uh, don't have a, a hiccup as we had yesterday. People are paddling with no numbers at all. We've got lunch and prize giving coming up uh, at around 11.30, just after the 11.30 race, the uh, junior and senior mixed relays. They will be uh, events uh, 10, uh, what are they, 104, 103, 104. So um, pick a winner out of this group these uh, no. under 18 women when you look at the pairing you're just going this is a this is going to be a tough choice so anywho we'll get through them white uh no no pairing in in uh, lane one but we've got eight crews now white trap padruton barnes well that's going to be a tough crew to beat wanganui stuart and o'leary another tough crew north shore canoe club davis and duffett Eastern Bay, Baxter and Webb, it just doesn't get any easier. Um, Poverty Bay in lane six, Dearness and Truun. Um, Ottawa had to be, uh, Coy and McDonald, Hawks Bay, Richardson and Gold, and Poverty Bay, Brooking Hapu and uh, Moitara. This is, <laughs> I couldn't pick anything from here. And plus, throw in these conditions, just with this puffy tail wind coming home, um, if these uh, young ladies get these boats up and running, whew. just nice that it's a uh, tailwind. Not many people like a headwind. So it's a nice tailwind coming home. So uh, John just 
picked out the um, under 18s, comes through now. So Kyle Gilbertson won that. Great time. Sub 145. Big brother. Sorry, still got the bragging rights at 141, but only three seconds between them. You'll catch him, Kyle. Yeah, and second, Dylan Monk. He breaking the 45. 146. Oh, close. What's that? One tenth of a second, almost between uh, second and third. But um, Dylan got up over Tiago. That was an exciting. We left that to the uh, the judges. So well done for that under 18 men's K1 500. So event uh, got a good clean start for this women's K2, the under 18 women's K2. No athlete there in lane one. But as expected, the white trap pairing of Padrut and Barnes flying out of the start. They are going well. Just settling now. Just got a little bit, a little bit off timing, but they've um, good discipline. Straight back into that timing again. But John, from this very, very early stage, Padrut and Barnes from the white trap club, looks like they may have just sprinted out and taken a very early lead. Yeah, there's got to be that utter appearing in there too. Yes, a Coy and McDonald, as you say, going very well. Yes. Yeah, the business end of the ring. <laughs> I, th I, I think it's over the far side. I think it's over the far side. They've just walked up past them and maybe in that last 200. So... So the next event, don't blink, you're going to miss this, folks. This is the Open Men's K2 500. And uh, I think it would be fair to say there's going to be some tired athletes in this after just racing the, uh, the K1. And sure enough, in lane four, we've got uh, Gilbertson, Kalani Gilbertson, straight into the K2. We've got McCullum, Barnes, Oosterhausen, all these guys. Ashton Riser all just have raced. Sammy Firkins, Poverty Bay, James Monroe, all these guys have just raced the, the K1 yes, 500. Yep. Uh, no rest for the wicked, eh, John? No, no. Yep. So, in uh, lane one from North Shore, we've got Clifton and Easterhausen. Lane two, McCullum and Barnes from Waitra. Lane three, Brown and Lace from Wanganui. Lane four, uh, Gilbertson and Clancy from North Shore. Monroe and McGibbon from Otago, lane five. Gosh, they're going to fly out of the start. Riser and Nataki from North Shore in six. The Brothers Firkins in lane seven, Poverty Bay. Prado and Lees from North Shore in eight. And uh, Ferguson and Gray from Karapiro, host club in nine. K2500, it's open. There'll be plenty of splash down there. They will look to be set.
Last words from the starter. So this is the open K2 500. Then we go into the junior mixed relays and that's it. And we have plenty of splash down there. We look to have a vacant lane, do we? We've lane got, um, four, I yeah. think it is, John. Yeah. And that's Gilbertson and Clancy. So any, we uh, won't take it away from the other guys. So lane three, Wanganui, Brown and Lace. Great start from those guys. And as to be expected, is at lane five, Monroe and McGibbon from Otago also flying out. We've just seen, though, in the uh, K1, James flies through and just tying up towards the end, but maybe with a partner in there, we get him pushed across the line, and I just think from maybe from our vantage point, it could be them, John, the Otago. Yeah, that, without yeah. doubt. They've got it, but they now know Raisa and Nataki on their right, uh, hitting them, and we'll see what this Otago combination can do as the distance Starts to get to them a wee bit. They are okay at the moment, but weird. What an attack coming from Raisa and Nataki. And on the inside, uh, Brown, is it? Brown and yeah. Lace there in lane three. But Brown, uh, but um, no doubt about it, Monroe and McGibbon are holding it. Here, come, uh, here comes that Wanganui. They're flying home, Wanganui. They may, they've got their kick just right. They may get up and over them. But they are coming home, storming home. They've certainly got second. No, they might just have the measure of them. So a well-measured race from lane five. Oh, well done, Wanganui. Lane five, Monroe <laughs> McGibbon. So he just had the horsepower to get across the line from Otago. Well, good racing, lads. Coming down here now on the inside. Lane one, Clifton and Easterhausen. And over there, the far side. Lane eight, well done. Prado and Lees from North Shore. So we'll certainly give it to lane five, Munro and McGibbon. And that fast finishing Wanganui pairing of Brown and Lace did get up. But John, 100 metres back, they were certainly in third, maybe even fourth. That was a great... I think if that race had gone another 30 metres, they might well just have done it. Yeah. But certainly it was um, Munro and McGibbon who held it nicely together. Exciting Brown and race. Lace and uh, Reiser and Nataki. So that's the final of the men's K2 500. A title going to Otago Kayak Racing Club. So we've got a um, junior mixed relay now. Yes, event 103, straight final, the under 16s. So we've got uh, North Shore, White Trap, Ottawa, Bay of Plenty, Hawke's Bay, another North Shore. Uh, team and then Mana and uh, Eastern Bay. So we'll get, have give them a 10 minutes or so to set up and then we'll have those final two races before the lunch break and the prize giving. So uh, enjoy the drizzle that's out there and reflect on some pretty good racing today. More to come this afternoon. Well, after the lunch break, we have uh, Club Relay at 12.40. So we've got uh, about an hour for lunch and prize giving. And then more novice races, 12 and unders. And, uh, of course, some finals as well. The Open Men's K4 is one of those finals. That's time to go at uh, 2.15. So a bit of a break, and then we're back in with the Junior Mixed Relay. Okay, folks, so we've got a few events just to finish up, but um, just on prize giving, all right? So we are still going to hold that down here in the Waipa tent where we've had our previous uh, prize givings.
uh, at our lunch break coming up in what was it John about half an hour's time just after we do these um, uh, junior relays mixed relays and a senior mixed relays and then we will have a lunch break um, so bring your brollies down tough it up um, as you've all done and we'll have our prize giving at the Waipa tent um, and we've got some amazing had some amazing races and of course we've had some clean sweeps from the clubs so we've got to get those photographs otherwise we don't want to we'll miss out on those um, from the one twos threes clean sweeps so uh, yes yeah, so the uh, prize giving will be down where we normally have it um, because the Don Rowland Centre have um, an event happening in there a wedding so uh, we're just down here and uh, just another reminder, please uh, bring all those numbers back. And um, uh, if somehow, I mean, they always get clicked off here when we clean our boats and weigh our boats, but sometimes they can get, through a bit of over-exuberance, lost in a towel or a jacket or something like that. So uh, just check your tents and surroundings if, uh, if you've got any numbers up there. I think we're still short of the twos, aren't we? So here we are, <laughs> I look out to the left, I just love all the colours of these kayaks. So this is the um, junior, mixed, junior mixed relay. Yep, over, over 100 metres. So um, they're lined up well behind the line. So we've got uh, in lane one, North Shore, so we've got Elmiggers, Elmiggers, Owens and Hills. And then we've got White Trap, Randall, Cautions, Valvin, Wheatley and Rowlands. And then um, Lane 3, Panea, Panea, Guard and uh, Seminoff. We've got Worcester and Worcester. <laughs> Look at them, all brothers and sisters, all sisters and brothers and all pairing up. Uh, Worcester and Worcester, Fraser and Turton for the Bay of Plenty. So, some great teams in here. It's exciting. Nice way to finish up for lunch. Yeah. Something to talk over. Nice relay. So, no doubt the coaches would have drilled them. You know, cross the line. Be back from the line when you're taking the tag. So some will be racing into a headwind, a slight headwind. Others will have a tailwind. I don't think it will matter, these uh, young athletes, what order they get.
So great start here down on the inside of the yellow boat, lane one. Don't know who it, who it uh, maybe Elminger, could be Owens, but it's a uh, good start. Oh, and now we're coming through lanes uh, three and six, five. Going very well indeed. Doesn't look, ooh, I don't know. We might have to leave that up to the judges. That looked like a very close crossing of the line from uh, lane five, was it, John? Yep, I think so. That's um, it's a Hawke's Bay combination. Look, flying home. We've seen this young lady racing before. Well, I think it's uh, Paneer. From Arawa. Yeah. So the lane seven is third. Oh, yeah, that's a good moment, honest Anna. change. <laughs> <laughs> They're well back from the line here. No chance of being DQ'd with that sort of changeover. Yeah. So Hawke's Bay still leading it. Ooh. This is the junior mixed relay. That Six one was well judged, lane four. Oh, and look what speed he's generating too. Yeah, oh. so he's... Ah, see, this is the difference between... Now, he's just come up straight through the three female paddlers. I guess they've got to have it judged. Two girls, two guys. Certainly dragged his team into second place. That's the Bay of Plenty, but uh, it is still Hawke's Bay. Merlo, Nukatai, Baker and Parker in lane five. Now we saw the big scorching 100 metres coming out of uh, lane four and the changeover. Will they be able to hold it for second place or will Ottawa close? They're certainly Ooh. closing, but it will be Worcester, Worcester, Fraser and Turton of Bay of Plenty who takes second place behind that Hawke's Bay combination. So a win there for Hawke's Bay and the junior mixed relays, 16 and under. Oh, just a wee slip of the paddle there coming home from lane one. Oh, they were doing so well. Never mind, I think they paddle just hit the buoy line and just upset them, offset them. Bring them home, nice and close to shore. Well, right. Well, after all that excitement, we didn't quite get <laughs> the, who, who came in. Hawks Bay Hawks won Hawks it. Bay, yeah. Yep. Just a very tight changeover. I noticed on that very first changeover. So we'll have to leave that all to the uh, judges. They need to confer to make sure everything was squeaky clean. But down this end, where we are on the finish line, gosh, they looked like good, honest changes, didn't they, John? Yep, very much. Yeah. So that's our first of our um, relays. Now, senior one, yeah. the senior. And now we've got um, the senior ones to do. Just before that, the Open Men's K2500 has been confirmed, and it was the Otago combination of Monroe and McGibbon, 134 for them. Uh, Brown and Lace did hold on for second, or stormed home for second from Wanganui, and Riser and uh, Nataki from North Shore. Uh, the bronze medal, that's the men's K2500.
So here we have our last relay or the last event before lunch. It's a straight final. We've got a. Uh, we've just had the junior. Now we've got the senior, uh, and then after lunch we've got the club relay. We will obviously combine everybody, and that's that'll be a, and that's just packed out. We've got ten lanes for it in the club club relay. But just right now before lunch, we've got um, Poverty Bay in lane three. This is the senior mixed relay. So Poverty Bay, Ottawa in lanes four and five. Poverty Bay again in lane six and then Ottawa in lane seven. So three Ottawa pairings or relays, four in a team. And um, two Poverty Bays. So they're being called up into the starters' hands. So look at lanes four, five, and six. They've uh, got their male exponents going off first. Lane seven and lane three heading off. So you've got to have a uh, good juggle of athletes here as they coming in to hit the line. Good, good, clean line break there. And so the lads have rolled over to the blokes here on the inside here, Poverty Bay, they've gone female, female, so they're going to be coming home with two, two guys as they're coming up. So um, this will be interesting to see who has the mix right. Oh, yeah, that was a good clean change, well well timed. So just waiting to come through. Ooh, very close changeover for the Poverty Bay here on the inside. They're changed over to the guys now to finish with. So one more leg to go. Have they done enough with the ladies paddling? And so here they come. Here come the blokes. They were well behind. So, hey, see how the... Very well thought out. They might get up here as they come streaming through. Poverty Bay might just take it. Oh, I think, yes, I think they do. Just coming through. But there were some of those chain -o changeovers, John, that might have just been, a, we'll have to put on the freeze frame because they were well judged. So anyway, lunch break now, folks. And of course, that means... Uh, Medal presentation. Yes, Tony's waving to us, so please come down. You know who you are if you've won a medal, first, second, or third, and please, the rain's uh, abated a bit, so come on down, support, get those medals done. Very important part, yes, to do the racing, but it's always good to take some uh, proof home to show Nana and Papa that you did indeed get second or first or third. All right. So uh, we're back at 12.40. All right. So we're a little over an hour for lunch. No. Yep. 12.40. For that's for the club relay. So <laughs> I, I think some of these guys will be having a light lunch. That's going to be a good one, seeing all these athletes in there. All right. So down there for the medal presentation. Tony's waiting for us. Thank you.
most of them and goes through the 50 quite comfortably in front but a couple out on the far side that's uh, Fraser Wainohu in uh, from Poverty Bay in lane six and outside of him Jason Berry of North Shore but it's going to be an all the way win for Oliver Emery of North Shore and Jason Berry and Fraser Wainohu and then uh, that looks like Lachlan Orman Evan Faithful coming through and that means the last of those paddlers didn't quite reach that finish line. But that's the first race of our afternoon session, everyone. I hope you've had a nice relaxing time. And again, uh, the relay was fun to watch. And again, um, nice that Lisa was here for that. So the presentations went well. Your lunch went well. The weather's holding. And we're waiting now for the second heat of the novice men's K1-100, which has uh, Scott Orman from North Shore in lane two. Uh, Bruce Campbell from Poverty Bay is in three. And then we have um, three from North Shore, Gabe France, Lucas Gilbert, and Mohammed El Sayed. So four from North Shore here, one from Poverty Bay. So the odd man out being Bruce Campbell in lane three, wearing the red top. Excellent start in lane two. This is Scott Orman from North Shore. And over in lane five, that's Lucas Gilbert. So it's going to be a North Shore one, two, and three in the second heat of the novice men's K1 100. I'm looking forward to the final of this. Lots of novices out there. Two heats of this and then uh, two heats of the women in the same situation, the 100 novice. And some of these uh, women in particular have had a big program already today with masters and novices races so we come up to a full lineup of nine for this first heat of the women's novice k1 100 
We've got three from Poverty Bay, a couple from North Shore, uh, two from Eastern Bay, and two from East Side Paddlers. And that's on the program, although we only see four coming up to the line at the moment. The rest are starting to make their way up. So Phoebe Sands of East Side, Hine Brooking of Poverty Bay, and Sonia Keeper also. Uh, Maha Khaled of North Shore, Brooke Conover, uh, Lily Van Emmed of East Side, uh, Eliana Parker Platt, Eastern Bay, Shelby Delane, Eastern Bay, and Kiwi Campbell back again from Poverty Bay. Yeah, some big, big numbers in these uh, <coughs> uh, novice women, John, over the K15. I'm just looking at K1100. I'm just looking at um, the winner of that uh, down here on the inside, North Shore, Scott Orman. Whoa. That's our novice paddles. <laughs> he's, he's got yeah, a bright yeah, future. Yeah. yeah. Bit of a family involved there. Yes. One, two. So they're all there, ready to go. Just waiting for lane four to come up a wee bit, but um, gets left behind at the start. So lanes uh, two and three. Look good. Also uh, way up in the far side, Poverty Bay's Kiwi Campbell. Not for the first time today, looking impressive out there. So she might just hold an advantage. Coming back down through the course to lane two, that's Hine Brooking. These two uh, from Poverty Bay have I been mean, slugging it out all yeah, through the morning, yeah. haven't they? But, so uh, lane would... seven gets it at yeah. the far side. Lane nine. Lane nine, nine it yeah. is Ki Kiwi Campbell. Back on this side, it's uh, Hine Brooking and uh, Sonia Keeper. We're going to see lots more of them, I think, over, well, hopefully over the next few years. As novice women have also, some of them have competed in Masters. They'll be uh, just fizzing when they get home from this. And what a fantastic experience it's been at the National Canoe Champs, supported by NZCT, of course. Lane four, just coming across here. So that was uh, North Shore, Maha Khaled. Well done to her. And this is the second heat of the Novice Women's K1 100. So we've got uh, Eastern Bay, Emma Bowgreen in lane one, Jennifer Orman, uh, North Shore in lane two, Grace Hark from uh, Eastern Bay in lane three, Georgia Hamblin, Poverty Bay in lane four, gosh, here comes the Poverty Bays, uh, Sheridan Mortara, uh, Poverty Bay, we got Poverty Bay, uh, Brooking Harpu, in lane six, Lindsay Carroll from North Shore in seven, and Christina Hawke, North Shore Club in lane eight. They're all lined up, just jockeying these hundred sprints. Ooh, some of the girls were just going backwards there. That's pretty tough to change your momentum. But out of the blocks, lane four, and over the far side, that's a flying start from Christina Hawke. Would give it to her at the moment. And just coming down here, lane four, Poverty Bay, Georgia Hamblin. But certainly over the far side, John, lane nine, that's Christina Hawke in lane eight, sorry, lane eight. Nobody in lane nine. Well done to her. And just down here on the inside, well done, ladies. Yeah, just looking at their faces as they lined yeah. up. You know, first big race, first race for a lot of them, and uh, a little bit of tension, a few smiles too, as they wondered what lay ahead. But uh, everyone raced very well. Jennifer Orman there in lane two, um, just sampling this. See how they go. Get the bug. Start Get coming back, hey. So that's event 109 done and dusted. We get up to event 110, which is the 12 and under 
K1 women. Two heats of this with uh, Willow Hamilton, Hawke's Bay, Emily Belsham, North Shore, Piper Rowland, Eastern Bay, Amelia Cortell from Hawke's Bay, Charlotte Willoughby, Bo Poverty Bay, and Abby Turton, Bay of Plenty. We've seen them all over the last day and a half of racing, so they're no strangers to us, and we look forward to seeing their improvement as we line up the first heat of two for the under-12 As thin as that pontoon is, look how much shelter <laughs> it gives yes. us on the course. You can see all the ruffled water behind it. So very fair conditions out here as these under-12 ladies are lining up, just coming over in the far side in the bright green boat. That's got to be Abby from the Bay of Plenty Paddle Sports Club. So she's in lane seven. Looks like we're all here now. So nobody in lane one. We're starting in lane two with Willow from Hawke's Bay. Seen her race hat. Can't mistake that bright boat. Oh, a beautiful start by all six athletes. Just down here on the inside, going very, very well is Willow from Hawke's Bay and over in lane six also going well John from Poverty Bay Charlotte Willoughby going very well I think I might just give it to lane six at the moment young Charlotte 50 down oh look at it coming on the inside here in lane two Willow but we have to give it to the far side yep Charlotte well done. Willow second and maybe lane three, is it? Up for third? Emily, I think. Yeah. Emily Belsham of North Shore. The start's so important on a short race like this. And a, a couple of them didn't quite hit their straps early. And others were smooth and continued their smooth paddling throughout the, the 100 metres. And those are the ones who featured in the top three. That's the... First heat of the women's, uh, 12 and under. The second heat, as they're lined up, ready to go and right now. Katie Harrison, unaffiliated. Uh, Zoe Keeper of Poverty Bay. Alice McBretty of Hawke's Bay. Uh, Pippa Randall of Waitara and uh, Tolly Baker, Hawke's Bay. So two from Hawke's Bay in lanes five and seven. Nice fair line. I think we're just waiting for the clock to tick down here before we can start this race. But just with a slight tailwind, these young ladies very good at holding their line. Just looking across at one another. So good sportsmanship. I think uh, that was uh, Pippa Randall just got caught out on the start there. She had a blade down on her deck, but just down here, two in for us, lane four. That's Zoe Kepper going very, very well indeed. Flying down the course. Well done, Zoe. And it's going to be tight for second and third, but probably lane five maybe. Yeah, I think so. Alex yeah. McBretty from Hawke's Bay. She'll get up for second. And oh, a bit of a whoopsie here in lane three. Might have cost um, Katie Harrison third place. And I think it will have gone to uh, Tolly Baker out on the far side. So that was our second heat of the under-12 woman rolling straight on into event 112. This is the 12 and under men's. It's a straight final. So... Look at this, four North Shore Club 
athletes in this. We've got North Shore in lanes two and three and North Shore in lanes six and seven. They are Owen Hawke in lane one, Zachary Ainsworth in lane two, uh, Max Egan, Poverty Bay in lane four, he's racing well, Theo Miners, uh, Waitra in lane five, Braden Gow from North Shore and Callum Allman and I think I might give this to young Max Egan. I love the way seeing how he races. So I think we've had an Orman in each of the last yeah. three events. <laughs> Here we go, lined up now, set to go. Six in this final of the 12 and under K1 100. Back paddling going on here from yes. Zach Just Ainsworth and Zachary Ainsworth of North Shore in lane three. Now looks to be okay. Great start from Max Egan. He's done this before. He's out of the blocks. He's still getting a little bit of speed up on that boat. He must have it up and running now. Oh, looking downside here on the inside. Owen Hawke from North Shore. And over the far side, lane seven, North Shore paddler, Callum Owen, Orman, sorry. But no doubt about it, been a winner in every single race he's done. It's lane four, Max Egan. That's a final. Well done, Max. Owen Hawke gets second out of lane two, and Callum Orman from North Shore is uh, third place so the title goes to poverty bay's max egan final of the 12 and under k100 so next up yeah senior mixed k4 200 and that's a straight final so senior mixed k4 and the only stipulation is here, you've got to be older than 17, we just see on our program.
So we just had it from our starter. All the K4s, the big boats are all backed in. Gosh, they're only just going to get their hull speed up uh, in about the 200, and they're going to be through the finish line. So... Well, that was a starter laying down the law. No false starts on her watch. It's, and I think they adhered to that, but flying out. Who's that, John? Lane 2, Whitechler, Padrute, Padrute, McCullum and Andrews. Got a very, very good start. Two over them, from over them, North Shore in the black. and But over again, must be another North Shore team. Uh, that is in lane 7, Mudahiri, Clancy, Bull and Woodhouse. So, we'll, yeah, seven, three, and five. Woo! Good, nice, clean start to it was. So well done to all those athletes. There's a mana crew coming through. Didn't quite see how they finished. We might have to see on the replay. Gosh, it's over so quickly, isn't it? <laughs> These K4s, no sooner have they started, they've finished. Over the 200 metre distance. Straight final, this next one as well, the 16 and under men's K4. Nice protected area down there on, around the pontoon as they come into their positions. Hawks Bay on this inside. And Poverty Bay backing up now. In three. Carapero navigating their way and in reverse, backing up into lane four. Arawa already there and held, as is North Shore in six. And just five combinations, so we'll take it that the second North Shore crew is not there. Event 114, this is. So they're all, they're all back 
kicked in, all five crews. This one's going to be a tough one to pick, John, I think. But you can't go past that Ottawa <laughs> crew, can you? Because they're so drilled in their timing, precision, getting out of the blocks and looking over and seeing them in lane five. Just heard from our starter, there's just uh, a trouble with one of the boat's seats. So we're just waiting for that to be fixed. Let's talk about the calm before the storm, John. <laughs> So just uh, now the field will be completed. That's uh, lane seven will be the second of the North Shore clubs. Uh, it was just uh, a bit late getting there and the request went out. Are you happy for them to go across the course rather than going right round the back and such good conditions down there. But by, so by the time they back in, it'll be all calm again. So this is North Shore in seven, North Shore in six. North Shore backing up now in lane seven. So Arawa, they've been held there for a long time. They were first into the pontoon, sitting there patiently waiting as the rest have filed in. Carapero alongside them in four, Poverty Bay in three, and on this inside, it's the Hawks Bay crew. Good clean start out of the blocks, as to be expected. Oh, just getting a little bit hairy, that middle crew. Yeah. Oh, and they still haven't got it together. That's Carapero, but on this inside, look at Hawks Bay, flyer from them. They have the edge at the moment. Arawa starting to move up through from lane number five, and on the far side, that is that North Shore team, which they waited <sighs> for. That Hawks Bay have it at the moment. Very, very close. Hawks Bay and North Shore. Hawks Bay carry the day out of lane two. North Shore in lane seven and Arawa in lane five. Oh, that North Shore boat. They got about three quarters of the way down the course and they just take a turn from a rowing fraternity. They just crabbed the paddles around seat three and four, big clashing in them, and I think that's where our inside boat here took the lead. So less lessons will be learnt there in this 200 metre dash. It, there's no room for mistakes. 
you know, over a thousand metres, you get a little mistake like that, even though you don't want it. You, you have a little bit of time to recover here. You'll be punished for it. And I think that's exactly what happened because, John, we saw them get out of the start blocks. They got out very, very well, and they were leading there at one stage. And just when that timing went astray, they pounced, they won, and they were relegated to second. But it was good, uh, yeah, good sportsmanship. Race. It was great race. Good mm. sportsmanship, I must say, from the other crews to be sitting there. Because you do your warm-ups. You know, you sit there and um, waiting for the North Shore crew because they had a bit of seat trouble, particularly in K4s, because they're not a personal boat. They're a club boat. So other athletes are racing in them and adjusting the seats. And there's only a certain amount of boats to go around. So uh, th big thank you to those very sporting uh, clubs to wait for them to come through. No harm done. We've uh, still pretty much on the on the time. So uh, next event, uh, under 16 women, three heats is to be expected over the 200. We've got Layla Stubble from Hawke's Bay in lane two, Hayley Stewart from Wanganui in lane three, Hannah Gard from Ottawa in lane four, um, Arabella Harrison from Hawke's Bay in five, Emma Thurton from Bay of Plenty in six, and Taylor Newman from Poverty Bay in seven, and Victoria Heaventh from Mana in eight. A good clean start, and Four. just we're saying, Seven. look. Yeah. Taylor Newman. Gosh. That's impressive. And three in from this side, it's uh, Hannah Gard of Arawa. Inside lane, it's uh, Layla Stubble of Hawke's Bay, but there's a clear air between lane seven oh and the wow. rest. Poverty Bay's Taylor Newman. From lane seven, Taylor Newman. She's probably just going to... Oh, no, she won't. I thought she would ease up here, but she hasn't had a look yet, so <laughs> she's going to surprise herself. Yes, Taylor, well done. You've cleaned that out by a few boat lengths. Oh, close for third. We've got three heats of this. Yeah. So... I think Hannah Card may have got it over yeah. Hayley Stewart, but um, certainly a, a very big win there by Taylor Newman. That's the first of our heats of the 16 and under K1-200. We've got uh, half a dozen in this next heat. Stella Crossan, Ottawa in one. Kira Hodson, Hawke's Bay in... Uh, sorry, in two, Ottawa. Uh, Hawke's Bay in three, that's Kyra Hodson. Holly Rowland from Eastern Bay. She's in four. Helena Pernea of Ottawa. Then Rosara Davis of North Shore. And Alexis Toy of Whanganui. Some names we've called a fair bit over the first day and a half of these... 2024 championships. Gosh, they come round so quick. That race has gone bang. I don't think we've been to a nationals where, oh, I won't say, I won't put the hex on it. <laughs> Everything has run so smoothly. Yeah, so, and that, of course, is fairly and squarely at the athlete's feet. So well done to each and every one of you making it run so smoothly. Not too many false starts. I don't think we've even hit double figures on that. Let's keep it that way. Mm. So just six young ladies in this race. Ottawa, Hawke's Bay, Eastern Bay, Ottawa, North Shore and Wanganui. Good clean start. They pulling that boat up and out of the water. A flyer down here, John. Yeah, Stella Cross. Yes. Right. From Ottawa and over Alexis Toy from Wanganui. Those two have got away very well. A couple in is Holly Rowland, Eastern Bay. And next to her, Helena Pernier. But it's the outside lanes that are doing the damage at the moment, making the most impact, particularly here. With Stella Crossan, she just has a nose in front, and it stays that way. Moore does it. It's Ooh. going to be close at the line. She holds it well, holds it together nicely. Lane seven and uh, then lane, lane four. four. So Crossan, then Toy, 
and uh, in Young third Holly. place was Holly Rowland. Well done, ladies. K1 200. We've got a athlete that's pretty good at this, haven't we, John? From the ladies. Uh, yep. Yeah. She's here. Nice to see her up there involved, and I mean, uh, you know, we. I know we're going to chat to maybe someone from Hawke's Bay if we get the chance, yes. but, uh, you know, areas like that that have got such a great number of under-14s and under-12s and youth just wanting to get involved, was it primarily because of what they've seen from the likes of uh, Dame Lisa, of course, and, and others who've been there at the Olympics and World Championships? Gosh, I th you know, I can't wait for that New Zealand team to be named for the Paris Olympics. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more thinking. It gets done for all the sports uh, to go to the other side of the world. We've got um, a team going away next week to the World Cups in Europe to, to race there. I think they're off to uh, Hungary, World Cup one. Peyton Quartel. In two, uh, catcher Cameron Bennett, Michaela Bates, Emma Dixon, Zoe Anderson, Leandra Owens, and uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. Jacqueline who? Yeah. <laughs> she had two yeah. big individual titles already. Yeah. So have a, we'll have a look, keep on that uh, poverty bait in lane eight. Here she is. If all the girls are into the blocks. Not to diminish the efforts of the other six, but um, Jack Holland having a wonderful meet. Only the heats, of course, she'll know that. As we say, no winning any medals in the heats. We just do enough to get through. And then we'll open up the afterburners later on in the day for the, uh, for the final. We just want to get through, go straight through to the final. And I think she's got out a well also just down here in lane two. We've got uh, Peyton Cortell from Hawke's Bay doing very, very well. So it's between her and over the far side, that's uh, Jacqueline Kennedy from Poverty Bay. Those two athletes got away very, very well. Coming through in the middle, three from the end, is that Zoe Anderson also doing really well. But just down here on the inside, lane two, Peyton Quartel from Hawke's Bay. And over the far side, Jacqueline Kennedy. She's probably just going to ease up now. Just take it to the line. Well done, Jacqueline. Another good race. And yes, coming down here, lane two, Hawke's Bay. And over there, lane six. Got up for third. That's Wanganui, Zoe Anderson. So I dare say... Those three young ladies will have made it through to the final. We'll have to have a semi-final to determine how to make it through to a nine-lane final. So maybe it was the... We had three heats, didn't we, John? So maybe it was the yep. first two from each heat. That'll give us six athletes and then uh, we need another three so we'll probably have a semi-final and it'll be the first three that come through from that to make us up a nine lane final there's all different sorts of plans depending on the the number of heats and athletes um on how it works so we look like we've got our sea sea boat classes coming in for another race here the open c1 200 straight final should have a few. Yes, here they come round now. Gosh, we've got five athletes. So we've got uh, Wing Kam from North Shore, Michael Esterhausen from North Shore, uh, Bruce Lee from Mana, we've got Jorgen Schertzer from Mana, and Penelope Strickland, unaffiliated. So it's the open. Penelope, she's the only lady in it, but... Um, she we did. saw her race. Yeah, she, I yeah, think yeah. she'll hold her own with these guys. She's closest uh, 
she's out there in lane seven, sorry. So we've got uh, five down to race, and I see four in the block. So is there anybody else out there amongst all those athletes paddling kind of funny, John? <laughs> I can't see one, so I think that's the four. We one, may two, have a three, scratching. Four, four, let's have a look. No, I can't see any sea boat. They're very distinctive style, of course. And I can't see any out there from this vantage point we have. I think four it is. I think it's, uh, is it Michael Oosterhausen that may be missing? Yeah, lane four yeah. is out. So it's uh, Cam of North Shore in three, then Bruce Lee in five of Mana, Juan Schutzer of uh, Mana in six, and Penelope Strickland in seven. Good clean start. And it looks like there, I we could probably give that to the Mana athlete, Bruce, Bruce Lee. Going very well. Penelope, she's, uh, she's holding her own with these guys, but it looks like the two Mana athletes. Penelope could jag a bronze medal here, just down here on the inside is uh, Wing Kam from the North Shore, but coming home, geez, it seems that they do one stroke and they're through the boy line, yeah. each boy line, don't they? But yes, lane five, good thrust at the line. That is Bruce Lee from Mana, then quickly followed lane six, another Mana athlete, Jorgen Schertzer, and then Penelope, well done Penelope. In the open, pulling the bronze medal, and just down here on the inside lane three, wing cam. Well done, guys. Nice to see these craft out here racing alongside the K-Class. All right, so now we've got the, the big girls coming on. The open and 23 and under K1 200. We have two heats of this. We've got uh, North Shore, Isla Westlake in lane one, Julia Padrut from Whitra in lane two. We've got Emma Kemp, the Evergreen, Mana in lane three. We've got Jessica Cleghorn from Eastern Bay in four, Natasha McGibbon from Ottawa in five, uh, Christy Tate, North Shore in six. I need to just put one and one together, Christy. I know Christy's dad from yesteryear. Rebecca Scott uh, from Bay of Plenty Paddle Sports um, in lane seven. Lane eight, Claudia Rogers from Ottawa and uh, Jess Marquette from Eastside in lane nine as we watch these ladies. This is open and under 23 women. There's a few names missing. I wonder who the title holder is. Mm. <laughs> Great opportunity to grab a title here. So two heats. And I think uh, we've got a full heat for this one, nine, and we've got eight in, in the other. next year. Yeah.
That's the hooter indicating the start to this first of our heats of the Open and 23 women's uh, K1 200. And good starts. Uh, Padrut here, second from the inside. Way out there in uh, lanes uh, six, it looks like Christy Tate. So quite good starts, and, and uh, you mentioned Evergreen, but we uh, we just see there in lane four, uh, Jessica Cleghorn alongside Emma Kemp. This is very tight. The red boat out there in lane six looks to have a slight edge. That's Christy Tate, but they're coming thick and fast, and Julia Padrut in lane two might just get up to take it. Padrut and Tate, very, very close. Lane five gets third there. That was Jessica Cleghorn. And I think uh, Kemp finished strongly for third or fourth. So a tight finish. Couldn't separate those first and second. So uh, down here on the inside, that was, ta that was uh, Julia from Mitra Club. And over there was it uh, Christy Tate. I think Christy had it with about three boys out. But... Um, Julia, put the foot down. Yep, a lot can happen over 30 yeah. metres, can't it? In this, in this 200, it certainly does. So that's the first heat done and dusted. And uh, event 120. Four from Arawa in the next heat. That's in lanes one and two, Lucy Campbell, Isla Joyce. And then Madison Garrett in four. And Leah McCallum in six. Those are the four from Arawa. North Shore have Alex Birmingham in lane three and Brooklyn Saunders or oh, and Erin Demopoulos in lane five and Brooklyn Saunders in lane eight. And that leaves uh, Truern from Mana in lane seven. So eight starters, so that's 17 in all, have contesting the heats of the open and 23 and under women's K1. They're just trekking into the start now. So no wonder the athletes are so good at this. I'm just watching this, and it's probably the obvious to, to most. The lanes one, two, three, and four, they come around here by the starting pontoon, John, have you noticed this? Yeah. And the other ones, you know, if you're in eight, nine, and seven, you come around the other end and bang. So there's no criss crisscrossy. So... Whether that's a f been a formal uh, instruction or whether it's just an obvious yeah. thing to do, so we, you know, we're not crossing one another's paths, it's just mate, speeding things up so good, so well. And of course, we had that in uh, the, the K4 race. We had one of the officials ask, do you want them to go around the back of the pontoon or can they shoot straight across the front to speed things up? So, well done, these athletes. Hasn't warmed up today much, though, has it, John? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, and it's constantly spitting yeah. out there, but look at that surface. Yeah. That's, that what mat that's what matters, isn't it? It is. It's, the race surface looks superb. People are going down the return lane reasonably pedestrian-like to ensure that it's all the wash doesn't get out there. Just lane one down here on the inside. That's Lucy Campbell from the Ottawa Club, just a little slow out of the start, which we can't afford in a 200. But, uh, well, it's John, what do you see? Well, I see four and five, Madison Garrett and Erin Demopoulos. Garrett and four, Demopoulos and five. You've still got to walk, cast your eyes out wide for mm. Brooklyn Saunders as well. And uh, down on the inside, it's a good, strong finish from Isla Joyce. But it is uh, lanes four and five who are going to battle this out along with uh, Saunders out, and out wide. It's going to be lane four. And that is Madison Garrett who takes it from Erin Demopoulos. So Garrett from Ottawa, Demopoulos from North Shore. 
and Saunders from North Shore. That's the second of our two heats. Looking forward to that final, the Open Women's K1 200. So the next race, event 121, Masters Woman, K2 200. Only three boats in it, and we see them coming around right now. So uh, two North Shore pairings, Orman and Wolf, uh, there in lane three. The other pairing, Vaughan and Carroll, North Shore in five. And sandwiched in between them is Poverty Bay, Campbell and Keeper. So this is the Masters K2 200. It's a straight final. Due to go at two o'clock. And I'd say that at least five of those six were in the novice yeah. as well. <laughs> when you read those names yeah. out. Yeah. Reacting well to the hooter and the fact that they're able to start and it's a nice even start. Uh, Poverty Bay maybe just uh, have an advantage but only a slight one. Now it's extending. There's Poverty Bay with Campbell and Keeper. On their left on the inside it's Vaughan and Carroll. So and Poverty Bay got away well but just on the inside here probably technically is uh, the North Shore pairing of Orman and Hawk. Uh, there we go, Poverty Bay got it together now. And they're coming down the course. Well done. So straight final. I think some of the, <laughs> I think they've got, already got a fistful of gold medals. <laughs> These ladies from Poverty Bay, Campbell and Keep. There's another one. Yeah, you're gonna, done for excess baggage going, <laughs> going back to Pretty poverty. Pretty impressive. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, like that. That's yeah. good. And a nice two, yeah. tight finish to Orman and yeah. Hawk. That's good value. And um, Vaughan and Carroll take third place. So all adding to the overall points tally. And at the end of the competition, of course, we have the club of the year. And uh, those two clubs, North Shore and Poverty Bay, certainly in the running for high positions. That's event 121. We move on now to the Masters men. Uh, two heats of the 45 to 54s. Just a message from Race Control, and it's good to see some boats now being carried up the bank a bit further, but those ones that are right down low need to be taken up further. It's becoming quite congested and um, slippery surface, so please move those boats that are right down towards the water's edge. Take them back up a bit further, please. That would be great. Now, as we're a healthy... Organisation here, um, one of the things you can do, although you might be thinking today with no sun it's not worth it, but we do have a mole map uh, um, office here, so some people, you can just see to well, to the near side of all the tents here, Just um, it's called Check, Detect and Treat, nice little white tent there, we can see three people in there at the moment, looking to uh, help you as you check today for any unusual spots on your skin. You know, melanoma is a big danger in New Zealand, and now is a great opportunity to get a free mole map check or find out a bit more about it. So today and tomorrow, you get free spot checks, and you can win a free full-body mole map uh, just by scanning the QR code at the tent behind the uh, Carapero, the red tent here right at this uh, um, race control end. So just in behind there, there's a mole map tent. So you owe it to yourself to go and see Cat or Carrie there and uh, have a spot check. And also you can talk to them about the dangers of 
that little red spot on your leg that you think looks okay but might be dangerous. So go and see them, have a check. Uh, no appointment needed and it's uh, something that you could do for yourself here today. So event one, two, two, we see them 45 to 54. This is the Masters men. Oh, I think Andy Logue will be yes. loving this, won't he? Yeah. And Garth Spencer, who's already won a title. He's in lane five. This is just the first of the two heats. Mike Walker looks okay out wide, but your good mates are <laughs> yeah, coming in the running the middle, here, aren't aren't they? they? Yeah, so Garth, Andy. Those North Shore, gosh, there's no love lost between those two, is there? <laughs> Certainly not on the <laughs> <Just> water. <no. laughs> you know, I can, uh, I think it it's, might just be lane five, is that yeah, Garth? Yeah, that's Garth. It? Yeah, oh, Garth. look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh. Whoa, gee. Oh, I think Andy Logue will be just winking at yeah. his teammate and good mate Garth yeah. Spencer and saying, I nearly got you there, and this is just a heat, so watch for me in the final. That's event 122, Masters first heat. And uh, the next races are lining up already. David Sleep is uh, in lane three, Vaughan Reed, Neil Gard, Matt Flannery, and Juan Schutzer. So they're parking up, ready to race. This is the second heat of two, Masters men's 45 to 54. There hasn't been much activity with those boats down on the waterfront, so please, um, team managers, just get some of the crew to go down and drag some of them up a bit further. We want them away from that area that's close to the water, They're just uh, in the road at the moment, and there's no clear pathway for people to get through. So wander down, pick up a boat or two and haul them up another 10 metres and everyone will be happy. Yeah, I think of that bottom row there, yeah. just leapfrogged, the front row would all be happy. So even if you feel like doing something nice, not your boat, just put one up. I can see some determined looking young men coming in to do something right yeah. now. Yeah, so that, that, broader, that very, very bottom row, if we could have that moved up, Thank you, lads. Well done. There we go. Look at that. Team managers. Probably yep. raced 10 races already. Yep. Young, young lad lifting up that red one. Going to take it up a bit further, mate. That'll be good. Oh, oi, no, oi, oi, get no, back. Don't just leave it there. Come back and get it. Oh, okay, take that one instead. <laughs> that's good. So that's three have gone up. All done by two people. So... You could um, just wander over and give them a hand. Purple boat going up now. Thank you, mate. That's about nine you've taken up by yourself. All right, so great start. Yeah, Here, this is that. the second heat of the Masters men, K1. First one taken out by uh, Garth Spencer. So closest to us in lane three, we got David Sleep from Whitesra, but out there is Matt Flannery from the Coupe Canoe Club in the sky blue boat. And just to his right, uh, Jorn Schürzer from Mana would give it to those two, but they're not going to give it to one another. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We're just going to race to the line. Or oh, maybe, I think he's got him. He just, oh, he's got him covered. So certainly nine or seven or seven or nine and coming home for third spot, uh, lane four. I'll certainly put you guys through to the final. That was Vaughan Reed from North Shore. 
So um, sadly, a couple are going to have to miss out, but we'll be no doubt stacking a uh, Masters men, a 45 to 54 age group with a nine lane final later on today. Thank so you to that woman in the blue jacket. Thank you very much. Good on you that you've taken up about 10 boats by yourself. One other guy over there helping. Now a few youngsters getting involved, but that's it. Heeding the call. If you want something done, do it yourself. That's it. <laughs> so Thanks under 14, guys. under four. Yes, thank you for that. She hasn't stopped. <laughs> so another straight final here, John. Event one, two, four, 14 and under women's K2 200. And look at that straight final. Nine lanes. Four of them with Hawks Bay. That's uh, in lanes one and two, Hawke's Bay, North Shore in three, Hawke's Bay in four and five, East Side in lane six, Poverty Bay in seven, North Shore in eight, and Poverty Bay in nine. Well, that's uh, just another enforcement, reinforces the fact that uh, some of these clubs are doing it so well with uh, encouraging and uh, keeping our young paddlers. So thanks everyone for moving up those those boats. It looks much better now, much safer. When we say everyone, yeah, that, that those you two people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few more help oh, there was later there. on, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And look, this woman here in the blue jacket, still yeah. doing it. I oh, know, we'll put her in for yeah. top clubby award. Yeah, life member of uh, Royal New Zealand because that's the sort of criteria that is required. Oh, here's Karen. Just as we wait for this race to start, message from race control. And with the weather threatening, they're wanting to just get the races through as quickly as possible. So keep an eye, managers, keep an eye on when your next race is coming up and have your athletes ready to go. So there's going to be no pausing. We want races to go one after the other. So just a warning, uh, weather's threatening and they want to get things done as quickly as possible. Here we go, next race. And I think, to be fair, these athletes have been doing exactly that. Yep. So well done, because I know a lot of you are doubling up in, uh, in events and, you're, and you've made it sportingly to, to the start line each time without holding up. So well done. Yes, so just a reiterate exactly what John said. Keep it going. Just keep it rolling through, because he's um, had a look at the weather band. There is a little bit of a front coming through which may make it unpleasant, particularly for the younger paddlers. So let's just keep these rolling through. As we're looking here, this K2 200, the under 14, all in the starter's hands, ready to go. Looks like lane four, Hawks Bay. Just a little bit of boat trouble there on the pontoon. So this is a final. We've got Ohio, uh, Ohio Hall in Hamilton from Hawke's Bay. Parker and Merlo, Hawke's Bay in lane two. So we obviously had a scratching with that lane four. Hawke's Bay, uh, Miss Avey and Luford are out. Got some boat trouble there. But down here... These two clubs from Hawke's Bay, Hamilton and Ohio Hall, and the uh, pairing of Parker and Merlo, great starts from those two. And probably, John, I would say way over the far side, Willoughby and Atta from uh, Poverty Bay. But just down here on the inside, oh. and the measure of these two clubs, probably lane two. Yes. Yeah, Parker and uh, Merlo. They're going to get up and take it, without doubt. It's going to be Hawke's Bay... One, one and two, two. and uh, Poverty Bay will come in for third out of lane eight. So lane two, that's Parker and Merlo. 
Hamilton and Ohio Hall, and Willoughby and Utter from Poverty Bay. So another very good two medals there for Hawke's Bay, and they're notching up a few in the younger age groups. So event one, two, five, this is going to be the fastest race of the weekend. Over 200 metres, it's the me open men's K4 200 metres. So we've got Kokomoa, Moore and Donderwinkle and Waller from Karapiro. There's a few names we haven't called yeah, out. Yeah, Donderwinkle, I haven't have seen him at all no, during no. this Ethan event. Ethan Moore, yep. Jake uh, Kokomoa, he, he raced uh, a few K1 200 just not so long yep. ago. It's nice to see them back into the programme. I guess as we get older or other obligations in life take precedence, we have to sadly back our training off. But, you know, it's still the thousands and the 500 may be just a little bit too ambitious to partake in. But, you know, we can race a 200 off memory. <laughs> so here we are, men's, uh, open men's K4. We've got Clifton, Oosterhausen, Prado and Lees. North Shore, we've got Wanganui, Lace, Firkins, Clifton and Lava, and North Shore, Riser, Gilbertson, Nataki and Roy. So probably one of these crews will win. Think so? Yeah, no. I just can't pick it. No. <laughs> I think one of, uh, the white boat might get there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, uh, or, I just, I, or a I, crew in black. Yeah, they, yeah, well, the crew in black. They, these on paper, they're four very powerful crews. Um, they want, you know, sadly, one of the uh, ha only having four in there, one of them's going to miss out for a medal. But they're going to keep them all honest. Otherwise, you go down the course and you sit, you know, in third, and you just go, oh, well, we'll be happy with third. But you can't think like that now because there's a fourth crew mm. that are going to burgle it if you be a little bit complacent. So I can't, honestly, I, I, these athletes individually have been racing very, very well. I look at that Karapiro crew. Um, you know, there's a few fresh bods in there compared to the other guys. So it's Karapiro in the near lane, then North Shore, then Wanganui. Then North Shore. Watch for the splash. There'll be plenty of it. Oh, I'm there's really plenty big of it, all hey, right. <laughs> gee, there's a lot of driving in that. And maybe that uh, outside lane, that Riser, Gilbertson, Nataki, and Roy combination have got away the best out of lane six. And oh. can they hold it there? The others are in a line. But it is the outside crew, North Shore. Jeebus, look at that. Whoa. They are flying down the course. That's a big advantage. That is Whoa. one and a bit boat lengths between the winners and the second place, which will go to lane number five. That's Wanganui, North Shore in uh, third place, and Carapero in fourth. So the team, it looks as though might have missed out on the medal, is the Carapero combination. But what an outstanding, right from the start, plenty of splash, great drive, brilliant to watch. Gosh, you have some horsepower in that, in that North Shore team. Congratulations, guys. Commiserations to Carapero, but great to have you in there, pushing all the boats down the course. Well done. So we've got a whole lot of K2s coming into the picture now, and that is because event 126 is the under-18 women's K2 200 metres. And uh, eight crews in this, nobody in lane nine. So we've got Hawke's Bay, Richardson and Gold, We've got, uh, there in lane one, we've got Wanganui, Stewart and O'Leary. In lane three, we've got Ottawa, uh, Coy and McDonald. In lane four, we have Poverty Bay, which is Dearness and Truwin. In lane five, North Shore, Davis and Duffett. Lane six, Eastern Bay, Baxter and Webb. Lane seven, Poverty Bay, Brooking, Harpu and uh, Moitara. And in lane eight, Waitara, Prudet and Barnes. They, uh, it's Prudet and Barnes pairing. 
they did very, very well, had done very, very well in their heat. They flew down there, and I think they were on the outside in their heat, so they were back on the outside. So just confirming that 14 and under uh, final, which we saw the, yeah. the women, Parker and Merlo of Hawke's Bay first. Hamilton and Ohio Hall did get second, uh, ahead of uh, Willoughby and Atta of Poverty Bay. So the two medals for Hawke's Bay yeah. there. Yeah, because that third place crew, I thought they were going to split them. Yep. So. Good to see the competitors for the next race uh, hovering ready to line up because as we said the, uh, the weather is threatening and race control want to get events away as quickly as possible. So the program takes us up to 4.30 this afternoon and these races are all bang bang one after another. So yep, please keep it rolling through folk. Medals at stake here, straight final, 18 and under. And Ooh. no recall, but we just see uh, Poverty Bay, Brooking Hapu and Motara uh, struggling at the start as the rest get away nicely in third. And from this uh, bank side, Arawa, Akoya McDonald look to be best of all, but they'll be well aware that way over on that far side again, we have that outside lane doing well, and that's the team you mentioned, John, Padrut and Barnes. They're in the white way over on the far side. Coming through in the blue too, that's uh, Baxter and Webb of Eastern Bay. And uh, down here though, lane three, oh, we do yes. look as though Akoya McDonald might just know they've been taken over as well, have they? No, they're holding it nicely. Lane three it's going to be, they get there first and may well have been lane six that got up for second ahead of uh, Padrut and Barnes. So lane six would be Baxter and Webb. But down on the inside here in lane three, Arawa's Akoi and McDonald take that title, the 18 and under women's K2, uh, 200. Well done. Maybe just a little bit lonely on the outside there for uh, Whiter appearing of Padrut and This inside racing, they were pushing one another. It just looks like it might be the winds just yeah, changing yeah. over a little bit to the to the side here. A little puff coming over from your right shoulder. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's possibly a bit more sheltered down here yeah. on the inside, is it? Not much. No, no over the, you'd be sheltered right over that very, very yeah, far yeah. side. So it's just the wind that we probably don't want. <laughs> so that might just be fluctuating, swinging around. Next up, uh, two heats of the 18 and under K1 200 for men. All just about ready to go. Ollie Egan parks up in lane one. Bryden Storey next to him. Charlie Mayston, Max Calvert, Liam Rogers, Oscar Jarvis, Tiago Chamberlain, uh, Max Kennedy and Oscar Dooney. So we're looking through there and there's uh, one, two, three North Shores couple of poverty bays and the start is reasonable first of the two heats three out from the uh, outside uh, Tiago Chamberlain as you'd expect experienced and uh, been right at the top of his game for a while now under 18 he looks to have the advantage well and truly out of lane seven gosh he just basically stopped halved his rate Oh, we got a swimmer there. Who is that, John? Lane four. Uh, is it Mana? Max, Max Calvert? Calvert? Yeah. yeah. But Chamberlain, oh, he's uh, cruising to it yeah. now. Fast finishing inside of him is from Liam Rogers in lane five. Uh, lane six was uh, Oscar Jarvis, I think, coming through ahead of Oscar Dooney. Oh, no, it's Oscar coming through now. So Max Kennedy. 
So all the way win to Tiago Chamberlain in the first heat of the men's K1 200. The next heat they're lining up. Shunosuke Koidi from uh, North Shore. Maya Campbell. Poverty Bay. Julian De Silva. Hawks Bay. Then Matt McKendry, Poverty Bay. Dylan Monk is there from Ottawa, out of lane five. James Hamblin from Poverty Bay in six. Uh, Raylon Lowe of Karapiro. Kaya Gilbertson, North Shore. And Noah Andrews of Waitara, nine. So 18 have contested the heats of the 18 and under men's K1 200. So Kaya Gilbertson in this age group. He's got two gold medals over the 1,000 and the 500 in his back pocket for the K1 class, not to mention K2s and K4s that he's participated in. So what's the chances he would want a clean sweep on all three K1 class distances? First task is to qualify, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Shinosuke in one from North Shore. He's held. So it's great work, everyone, getting through these races all set up to go. Just clear, waiting for the course to clear with that we spill from lane four in the previous race. You can see the number on the boat. So it was number four, Max Calvert of Mana. I didn't see what happened there, Mr. No. He was racing very, very well. Must have just hit the buoy line or, or something out there. Right, so that's cleared. Just heard it from the start and we're going live. So this is the second heat, final heat of the under 18 men's. Everybody's where everybody should be, nine athletes. Watching over there in that lane eight, that's Kaya Gilbertson. Uh, his start is very good. Three inside of him. Uh, that's Dylan Monk, isn't it, in lane five? Yes. Who's got the best of them. Gilbertson just starting to ease up alongside. Wants to qualify, of course, all these paddlers do. And Gilbertson now winding into it. So he and Monk are having a ding-donger out there. <laughs> is this the final now? Uh, gosh. <laughs> so. Monk, we glance across to his right. He's, he's pulled up. Yeah. And Kaya's still going through. Kaya's going to win this comfortably over there in lane eight. Dylan Monk just doing enough to qualify. Oh, down here, lane two. Very yeah, good that race. Was Maya for Campbell. Yes. And also Matt McKendry, the two Poverty Bay paddlers, finishing third and fourth. Yeah, they, oh, that was interesting with um, Dylan Monk. He looked across yeah. and thought, well, I'm comfortable here. I'm in second place. Yeah. I'll just conserve it a bit. Uh, Kaya Gilbertson wins it. So that's uh, the second of the two heats. And that uh, final for the men's K1 200 will be, uh, 18 and under that is, will be well worth watching when it appears that uh, at 224 event one, uh, where is it? Uh, on today? Yeah, um, 332 event um, 144. So here we are into the under-16 age group now. Just going to drop down one from the 18s to the 16. And again, two heats of this. And just looking through the program, looks like we've got, uh, yes, two full heats of nine. So well done, under-16 men. Uh, Dane Worcester, Bay of Plenty in one. Oliver Hutchinson, two. Oliver McDonald, Ottawa, three. Uh, Rourke, Dooney, North Shore in four. Hunter Lee, from Karapiro in five, Martine Baker from Hawke's Bay in six, Nathan Eloff from Mana in seven, AJ Kinsella from Poverty Bay in eight, and Jack Cooper from Waitara in nine. These are this under 16, two heats. Gosh, the numbers are huge. Keep this rolling through. Keep numbers healthy for CRNZ in the next few years. It is. Thank goodness for umbrellas. I 
Have you got one, John? Yep. <laughs> we see up here, not much yeah. rain happening up here in the commentary tower. Just list, missing a boat there in lane four for this race. That's uh, Rourke Dooney from North Shore. I don't know whether he's scratched or not. So Rourke or from, uh, where's he from, from North Shore? Is he scratched? We're just a little bit perplexed here. No, we're going to run it. We've got to stay ahead of time. We tried. It's good to be sporty where we can. But we've got a big weather belt coming through, folks. So we want to stay ahead of that if we can. Had a scratching out there from lane four, sadly, Rourke Dooney. But well, if he'd been there, he would have been looking to his right and seeing a brilliant start by Hunter Lee of Carapero. Gosh. Now lane six, that's uh, Martine Baker of Hawke's Bay. Down on the inside here, this uh, lane's one, two, and three. You can throw a blanket across those three. But I think certainly lane six, that's Hawks Bay, Martine Baker, very Ooh. well indeed, and Ooh. perhaps... He's not going to win it. No, he's not. Where did lane two, do beg your pardon, lane two from Hawks Bay, Oliver Hutchinson, coming home like a train down here on the inside. We've made that mistake before, John, haven't we? We're looking out afar and something's happening right under our noses here in lane two. So congratulations, lane two. I'd say that Oliver just got up. I think Martin Ebaco, he, yeah. he had that race with even with 20 to go. And they look across to the left, and I think he, he pointed his finger across to lane two to say, yeah. no, you got it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he was too upset. No, I'm sure out of uh, two heats, both those young men will qualify. Well done, guys. And uh, we promise for the final... If you're in the lead, we'll be calling you. <laughs> yeah, we'll look across all the lanes. Getting long in the day. Don't worry, John, we've got another day to go. This day and a half. We're halfway through. Yep. Our nationals. Well, how about that? So, event 131. Heat two of this under 16 men. Again, are you full house? We've got Rory Orman from North Shore, Jake Botha from North Shore, and uh, Caden Thrupp from Poverty Bay. In three, Carapero, uh, Luca Cartwright uh, in lane four, lane five, Hawks Bay, uh, Sean Burgess, uh, in lane six, Hawks Bay, Nukatai, in lane seven, Ottawa, we have uh, Lewis Monk, lane eight from Wanganui, of course, is Ben Tullock, and Riley Scott rounding up in North Shore in lane nine, and he's just coming now. No scratchings in this one, all nine athletes. And last, uh, last time we commentated on most of these names, uh, we were calling them masters. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember Jake Porter going oh. across, and I thought, oh, he looks a bit old yeah. for a, you know. But anyway, yeah. we, we thought they were the under-16, but it was a masters race, so he gave them the wrong names. And here we go. No, well, I'm ready for this. Rory Orman there in lane one. And Porter in two. Lewis Monk out on seven from Aroa. So we're up here in the control hotel. We read these names over and over and over again. We never, ever really get to put the faces to the names. So it's nice to get down there and see who these belong to these names. So good start here for the final heat of this uh, under 16. Yeah, great start right over the far side. Going very well in there, Riley Scott from North Shore, and probably two in from him from the Ottawa, Lewis Monk, also going very, very well. 
And we better not make that mistake again, John. Better quickly look down here into the inside lanes. And indeed, in saying so, lane two, Jake Botha from North Shore. But I, I think all the way, all the way over there in lane nine from North Shore, Riley Scott hasn't skipped a beat. He's got this uh, heat sewn up. And then lane seven, and all close between lane eight and lane two. Yep, Lewis Monk getting second clearly, but yeah. you're right, close between Jake, Jake Boerter and, and uh, Ben, ben Tulloch. Yeah, yeah, just down here on the inside, a great solo race by Jake from North Shore. A little bit lonely because all the action was happening across the other side of the paddock. So, oh, don't know who got up there. Maybe it's uh, this race plan, I think. We'll be taking the first four and the fifth fastest. There may be a semi-final. We'll see later on through the day. So that concludes our under-16 men's K1 200. Yahoo! We've got about six finals coming up. Bang! All after, one after the other. The first final, John, is our novice woman, K1 100. Well, we should know these uh, <laughs> athletes really well because we've got Brooke Conover uh, out of lane one, um, Kairahi Brooking Hapu, Hine Brooking, both from Poverty Bay, Christina Hawke and Kiwi Campbell, then Georgina, Georgia Hamblin, uh, Sonia Keeper, Grace Hark and Lily Van Ahmed of Eastside. Uh, so all those names... We've seen a lot either in novice or masters, yeah. or age group, in fact. So they seem to be uh, novice to masters, and they've missed the age group in the open, which is your, basically your career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is just the hundred. So they're coming up to the hundred start line. Starters down there waiting. So this is the novice uh, woman, then we'll have the novice men, and then we'll have the under 12 women. So over the hundreds. Okay, as we uh, get ready for this next race, just uh, a reminder that we are trying to push the races through quickly. So the message seems to have got out to everyone. Thank you, managers and uh, competitors too. As they line up now for this uh, final, the K1 100 novice. Yes, yeah, so we've just had a wee message as weather band coming from the north. Auckland is being drowned at the moment. So it is heading south. So we probably want to see if we can get as much through the program as we can. Good start. Good start, everybody. And it's not even a held start. So well done. John, who do you see? <laughs> well, I, I do see that um, Hine Brooking in lane three, but alongside her is Christina Hawke of North Shore in lane four in that orange top boat. She looks pretty smart at the moment. But the attacks are coming, particularly from Brooking Harpu in lane two. And over in lane five, that's uh, Kiwi Campbell. But I think lane four might just hold it to the line they go. <gasps> and then two and five. So, oh, <laughs> a tip oh, two. You know, I, she fell over. She yeah. fell in, rather. But uh, I think she was across the line. 
just on her right side, I was watching her. She's already got a few gold medals in her back pocket. That was uh, Kiwi Campbell. But she just had a few support strokes coming down the course and she fell back. Another support stroke and she fell back. So she got up for a, a good second. Yep. And I just think maybe a, a, those few support strokes really... But hey, I think... Uh, well, we'll confirm Lane that for you when yeah. it comes up on um, live results, she... which we're getting a lot of our information from. So if you're um, not too sure of your start time and things, they are being changed around, I think, on live results. So this is great, seeing the athletes ready to go and then the next uh, lot of competitors <coughs> moving into position as well. So that's event 132 is gone. We're up to 133, which is the novice men. Uh, Lachlan Orman parked up there in lane one, all ready to go. Gabe France in two, North Shore. B Jason Berry, North Shore. He's there in the white. Scott Orman in four. Oliver Emery, North Shore. Lucas Gilbert, North Shore. Fraser Wainohu in seven. Yep, see him there. Bruce Campbell, Poverty Bay, and Evan Faithful, Eastern Bay. Full field there, just waiting to get into line. Yes, we've heard that the weather in Auckland is shocking and um, it's moving our way. So this is a great move and your support and uh, cooperation is really appreciated. So event 133 ready to go now. We're Ten minutes ahead of that schedule so you'll see the amount of time we're making up. Does the... Lane three athlete there, Jason Berry from North Shore. Just a little bit of extra stability. Had his leg hanging over the side of his like as in a surf ski. Look at this lane four oh, driving oh, through. Who's yeah, that? That's Scott, Scott Orman and Oliver Emery alongside of him. Those yeah. two are certainly taking this race and they are about to bow. They'll get one buzzer there for the two of them as they cross the line. Ooh. So four and five, and in third place was uh, Fraser Wainohu of Poverty Bay. That's to be confirmed because they were flashing through that line in a mass. And poor old Jason Berry, just I think he fell out just before the line. Look at them, all ready to go oh, for no, the next brilliant, race. Eight. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, each and every one of you athletes. Give yourself a pat on the back. It's good to see. That'll keep Karen happy. And if Karen's happy, we're all happy. You just need to ask Matt. Of course, we're just looking for the open C2, which will be the final after this. I can't see any C2s out there at the moment. So just be aware, unless there's been a change, that North Shore and Mana open C2s. Uh, the next race after this. Just check and see if that race is still going ahead. One three four is uh, what we're up to. The twelve and under women's K one one hundred. Piper there in lane one. Tolly in two. Willow in three. In that uh, the pink from Hawks Bay. Zoe Keeper in four. Just holding it nicely. Charlotte Willoughby in five. Yep. Alice McBreety of Hawks Bay. Emily Belsham. In the orange top, just coming into line now, Katie Harrison and Abby Turton. Abby Turton and that vibrant green thing over on the far side. This is a final. So no sign of those C2s, so we'll soon find out whether they're shifting the um, program around a bit. I'm sure we'll hear. We'll hear. In the meantime, here we go. Take my hat off to these um, 
under 12 ladies that just held a perfect line as we were just waiting for officialdom to do their thing. They're just backing up now, which is to be expected. So well done. Oh, lane 8 is it? Just a little bit. It's a, like a big oil tanker trying to move that thing around for her. <laughs> but you're doing a good job, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, that novice women's race confirmed Christina Hawke won it, Kiwi Campbell and uh, Kaihara, oh, Kaiaraha uh, Brooking Hapu uh, got the bronze medal. Nice start. Look at that big yeah. pink machine in lane yeah. three. Willow Hamilton. That's a good start, but you, sometimes your eye is caught by the colour. Yeah. Uh, still, she's looked good. In lane five, that's Charlotte Willoughby from Poverty Bay. So lane five, lane three. Lane five doing very, very well. Yeah. If I'm going to get a new boat, I'm going to make it a pink one, because look at this pink one down here. They did well too. So there we go, lane five, and that's Charlotte Willoughby is going to win the 12 and under women's K1 100 from uh, Willow Hambleton. Well and done. And then you pick who finished third. Good racing. Well done. Uh, lane three. What, did they get up for second? So yeah, it was uh, pretty sure yeah. it was. Yeah. Well done. All right. So we've got our C2 no. 200 meter. This is the final. No sign of them out there. Yeah, oh, yes, there's one on just going in. Yeah. So we've got our C class once again. <laughs> on this program we're probably running we've made up 10 minutes so look at who's on the water so we're really looking yeah. next at the uh, women's open k4 event 136 yep they're bringing those k4s down now getting on the water well done to you so just the result of that novice men's k1 uh scott orman well done from north shore uh, Oliver Emery, North Shore, and Fraser Wainohu of Poverty Bay just uh, kept out Lucas Gilbert of North Shore. So the gold going to North Shore and the silver, and Poverty Bay pick up the bronze uh, for that event. Congratulations, North Shore is two athletes. At 12 and under final the results are through now and that was Charlotte Willoughby of Hawke's Bay, of Poverty Bay, I'm sorry, who got up to take it. She was in lane five. Uh, Willow Hamilton in three, yep, from Hawke's Bay, gets the silver medal. And uh, their times incident, 33.4 and 34.3. And then in third place was Piper Rowland. She did get up for, uh, out of lane one for the third place, just ahead of Emily yes. Belsham. There are C-class paddlers are all on the water now. Good to see. So this is a are straight Are there two final. crews there or just yep. one? Oh, so our second one coming um, in now, right. The two athletes. So this is the C2, 200 metre straight final. So lane four, we've got North Shore. And lane five, Schwerzer from Mana, Schwerzer and Lee. They look very strong. And following these, the Open Women's K4, 200. That's a straight final. See one of the crews getting up ready, so that's a good start. Gosh, this, <laughs> this deck hasn't, this jetty hasn't seen so much action as soon as a boat's gone, bang, another one's in its place to <laughs> either come in or go out. These things are very, very precious craft. Oh, we just, the seat's falling out of the blue boat. That's good, another of the K4s heading down, ready to go after, straight after this race. Eased up now, which is yeah, a good thing yeah. to see. In fact, that wind that was coming across is not evident now. So 
so man are getting away well well they've looked to be the the better of the crews yes. throughout the look that's they've obviously done a bit of practice in this and Scherzer and Lee Cam and Esther Hazen They're paddling both, both paddling on the same side, aren't they? Which is yeah, I think been yeah. I don't think they've spent too much time together looking at them no. when you compare to the Mana crew who are almost crossing the finish line. But you know what? They probably this is what I call team spirit because you know what? Would you really want to get out there and do that? No, you wouldn't. You haven't spent much time together. But they know that they're up for a silver medal in this. Yeah. So. Being the good clubbies they are, well done, Mana. Coming across the line, pat on the back to your mate. Um, North Shore. Just have to make sure they stay in yeah. their lane this time. Yeah. Right? I don't know whether they got DQ'd last time at all, but... Oh. They've, they've got a bit of momentum up now. Yep. Every race is a better race. Gosh, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like the thing's going backwards, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't be so cruel, but it's the, they're f they are funny boats, odd shaped boats. Well done, North Shore. That'll keep everybody happy in that North Shore club. Yep. So they, Schertzer and Lee, they won the uh, 500. Yeah. And uh, Cam and Mr. Hazen continue to pick up those uh, silver medals, so that's all good. Yeah. So now we see a bit more activity with the women's four. It doesn't look as though they were too keen on <laughs> making up the time. We had a really good 10-minute uh, jump on the uh, program. Now I think the start is starting to call them in and say, come on, we want you, we're making up time here, get them yeah. here. So Masters Woman, please, you should be on the water as well now. Uh, event 137, uh, Sarah Jex, Rosemary and uh, Nene. Ladies, you should be on the water. I'm sure you are, because we want to keep this program rolling through straight after the Open Woman. This K4. So six crews. We've got three North Shore crews. Uh, North Shore in lane three, North Shore in lanes five and six. And uh, we've got a crew from Bay of Plenty. They're in lane two. A crew from Ottawa. They're in lane four. And Eastern Bay. Have a look who's uh, stroking this K4, folks. Because... We've got Dame Lisa in the in the front of the boat, and uh, you know what? If I was one of these athletes, Baxter, Roland, or Crossens, I don't think I'd be stop smiling all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, Dad, Nana, anybody that wants to listen to me, I'm just paddled with Dame Lisa. <laughs> and you know what? Good for you, girls. Lisa doesn't mind that in the slightest. She's such a team's person. I do believe she's just been given, um, and rightfully so too, I think, um, life membership to uh, CRNZ, Canoe New Zealand. So congratulations to her. And of course her coach as well, and team. And given uh, life membership just waiting for the boat over the far side. That's, That's them. them. <laughs> yeah. That's them. It'll probably be the person you know, steering it. Well, I, think she's out. I think she's sitting three. Oh, she's oh, in the yeah, three yeah, seat. Yeah, oh, good yeah. for her. Trialling it out. I thought she'd be... Uh, uh, the way it's written down, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean the order that you're sitting in the boat. So... Uh, no use giving you the binoculars. No. I, can't see. <laughs> I couldn't see. Oh, I don't... Saying that, I got a reminder coming through the emails. John, you need to go to the optometrist. <laughs> uh, when do you find time? It's funny, you know, because um, just was waiting for this little chit chat. 
I did so many years without, I should really go get glasses. My wife was telling me I should go get glasses. And the moment I went and got them, now I can't do without them. So, yeah. There's a lesson there. It's, yes, there is a lesson there. It's like all of you when I mentioned that um, mole map tent that's over there behind the uh, Carapero tent. So today and tomorrow, free spot checks. So you all probably check your skin every now and then and see you've got something that you're not too sure about. It might look innocuous now, but it might not be. So go to the mole map tent and have a free spot check. As canoeing people you spend a lot of time out in the sun and look at the start here from just uh, inside that eastern bay that's north shore with Clifton and Saunders and Tate and Birmingham that's the white boat too from the outside and they've got it at the moment that'll be uh, Arawa in lane four in lane five the other north shore team and on the outside eastern bay attacking and attacking well and may get up for second I think perhaps, perhaps not. It was Ottawa and Eastern Bay second or third behind that North Shore team of Clifton and Saunders and Tate and Birmingham. Yeah, they certainly got a second or a third. Maybe it was that engine in seat three wasn't pulling her weight. <laughs> hey, they might have to kick her out. Oh, good to see Lisa down there racing with her club mates. Congratulations, There's a North, was it the North Shore team got up? Yep. Because they got some horsepower in that. So, Strand of the Master, here they are. Look, of course, they <laughs> Rosemary's there. Nene's there. Sarah's there. They're coming in. And, of course, the next event after 137, you young under 14, you should be on the water. All of you under 14 in your K1s. And I see even the, um, for K2s. the K2s. Yep. Yes, for the K2s, I do beg your pardon. The under 40 men's in the K2s. You're getting on, and look at them, John, behind that pontoon. So well done, you guys. We can keep this rolling through and everybody be happy because it was predicted, this uh, these storms to come through. And if it's uh, thunder, as they predicted, there's normally something that accompanies the thunder, which isn't too much fun when you're in a low-lying lake. So I guess our health and safety officers will be watching this very, very closely. So let's get these races through. Isn't that a pretty picture, all those K4s rolling through? At a reasonable speed. Yeah, That's at good. a reasonable speed. And still, you know, not too selfish that they are putting out a wash to these... Uh, Master's woman. That is a spectacular sight. I never get I never get sick of it. You know, it's so such a good, healthy sport. And I, they come away and as to be expected over the far side, she cleaned out the five hundred. That's Nenny Disse from North Shore. I think we're going to see a repeat of the 500 here, John. Certainly, Nanny yeah. and Sarah. Yeah. Uh, Rosemary. She must have a shoebox full of medals. <laughs> hey, oh, it'd be a pretty I'm, big yeah. shoes she was I wearing. Know. If that was the case, I think it'd be a suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the years we've been calling out. And yep. I love her little rig that she's got. You can see the little thing that she puts her, her, her kayak on. And you watch, John, she will be spraying it um, down there, fumigating it to make sure um, she doesn't take any under desirables away from this lake or anything onto the lake. And here we are, just crossing for second spot. That's lane three. That is uh, Sarah Jex. So well done. And here comes Rosemary as the K2 lads under 14 are coming in. We're just going to quickly roll this through. Masters. 
So it was uh, North Shore in the women's K4. Clifton, Saunders, Tate and Birmingham won that from Carrington, Baxter, Rowland and Crossan from Eastern Bay. And Ottawa did uh, get up for third, or were just kept out of second, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Garrett, McGibbon, Joyce and McCullum. Do they give us a time between that second and third? 38.3 uh, and 38.38. Oh, yeah, so, look at yep. that. It's like four hundredths of a second. Yep. So, yeah, that was very close indeed. So, these uh, K2s under 14 popping in now. Well done. No crews in the first two lanes. But North Shore in lane three, Poverty Bay are in lane four, White Throat in lane five, Eastern Bay are in six, North Shore are in seven, and Hawke's Bay are uh, in eight. Just looking at this pod, pod, uh, Poverty Bay crew, Kinsella and Waino. That's your pick, is it? Oh, they just, you know... Don't do it, don't do it. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I, won't, I won't put the hex on them, but all <laughs> I'll, I'll, what I will say is this. A coach looks for consistency. Yeah. You know, just as so long as you're consistent uh, in saying that, I feel vindicated because they've had a very good, good start. They have indeed. Out of the blocks, yeah. And over the far side, uh, who's that? North Shore, Hills and uh, Omens. They're doing also very, very well. So in fact, it's that, that combination which is leading through the halfway. To the left of them, it's Eastern Bay, Roland and Faithful. And your uh, Poverty Bay, Kinsella and Wainohu mm. in third place. But certainly lane seven and then lane six doing very, very well. That's uh, Almiga. No, beg your pardon. That is Roland and Faithful. Reading out the wrong one here. Yep. So well done. And that looks like Gisborne coming through. Showing their consistency. Well done, guys. So that's the first heat done. Yep. Probably made it through to the final. So North Shore from Waitara and Poverty Bay. They're all getting ready for the next one too very quickly with Waitara in lane two. North Shore in three. And the fact there are three North Shore teams here. Yep. Ottawa in four. Hawke's Bay in five. Then the two North Shore teams, Almaga and uh, Leoskovsky in six, uh, Lomax and Sun in seven, both North Shore, and the second Whiterer Club, Wheatley and Beck in lane eight. Yep, they're there. So also coming up events 140 and 140. So they're Masters men, 55 plus age group. You guys should be well and truly on the water and also on the water under 16 women's K4. So we had the uh, open women's K4 you're probably waiting for them very, very patiently. So in you come. Let them swap out these K4s for the under 16. Keep things rolling through. Well, oh, that's a great picture, isn't it? All of their red peaks, orange boat from North Shore. Just having a wee quid it all with the masters. God, I got, I got second. Yeah, we got first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at the the different age groups. They're just stoked. Uh, there's Rosemary. You didn't pedal oh, hard enough if you yeah. can run like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got somebody. Well, she gets her little four wheels now. That's if she avoids the yeah. end of that boat. Yeah. Well done. Gosh, that'd be a great. Great photograph for the club, wouldn't it? Those ladies holding their... Ah, they're waiting for a Lisa photo. Oh, she touched the boat. That's a good omen. It's Rosemary with her assistants. Got the wheels out. On goes the famous yellow and red boat. I reckon, you reckon we, could, we could get, I think it is, but I reckon we could get Rosemary's cart when she's not looking. Let's go to the top of that hill. And I've seen it on YouTube, John. We could roll down the water. Yeah, and make a big splash. All right, so we've got to start the second uh, heat of this under 14 men.
and they've come flying out of the blocks in the middle as to be expected. Uh, that is the Ottawa pairing of uh, Semenov and Panea going very, very well. Just on their right now, of course, Egan and Mabritri uh, going well for Hawke's Bay. So it's going to be a two-horse race between these two boats. Um, we're just going to make it through to the final. Oops, we've got some swimmers there. So that's white uh, pairing of uh, Cashins, Velvin Ooh, and Miners. This is close. This is very, very close. Just hold on to your boats there, lads. Here comes the IRB now. But certainly lane five just got up there. So that was Egan and McBreetree over uh, lane four. Uh, that was the other appearing of Panea and uh, Semenov. And then finally, who's got the air? Six. six. Lane six was third. Yeah, Laskowski and Almiga. So well done, guys. Right, coming around, should be coming around into the start. The Masters men, where are you? Here they come. Well done, lads. Please don't have the finger pointed at you because you should know better, better than most anyway, uh, to get out there on the water. Four athletes. We've got Jeff Mould in lane three from Poverty Bay, Grant Morish from uh, Hawke's Bay in four. Chris Emmett, good to see you, Chris, in Bay of Plenty in lane five, and Derek Stewart from North Shore in lane six. So uh, this is the Masters men. No doubt the under-16 women's K4. Look at them, John. Like They're coming in nicely. Up. They're yeah. all lined up behind. So well done, you. So 141, I think, will be ready to go. How about 142? Masters men, 35 to 44 age group, K1 200. You guys should be well and truly on the water as well to keep things rolling. We can see a few K1s out there. And then... Um, We've got some, that's a Masters men straight final, and then we've got the Masters men, some semi final, a semi final happening for the 45 to 54 age group. You guys, I know it's due to go at 3.28, all right? So we're going to be ignoring these times until the end of the day. Just follow the uh, procedure, the pattern, just because we're going to quickly roll these through, as we've been asked to do, and everybody's playing their part. And if you check, if you're not too sure, check the live results from Canoe Racing New Zealand. They, they have updated times there, so this race is in fact due to go at yeah. uh, 3.08. Oh no, 1.40, we're looking it up, we? One, yes. Number 1.40, due to go at, well it says 3.16 there, so no, they haven't updated it, but you're just wanting to get as far ahead as we can. Yeah, so we're probably just running, what, 11, 12 minutes ahead of time, we can... We can do better than that, folks. Let's get to the 20-minute mark, because that could be... You know, could save the day. Save the day. Keep everybody happy, and everybody's race is going through. And we're only going to get it done with your cooperation. So all our Masters men's are Looks in there. There's like four of them, yeah. yeah. Four athletes. Jeff Mould and Grant Morris, yeah. Chris Emmett and Derek Stewart. Yeah. Back again. 55 <laughs> they are and back over K1-200. Yeah. They go, yeah. and this is a good, uh, that's 11 or 12 minutes ahead, so oh, we're really doing swimmer. well. We've got a swimmer, so Derek. we're down to three, so the medals are sorted already. Chris Emmett got a flyer, and when I say a flyer, that was like a good fair start for all four athletes, but he's got a flyer. Uh, he's settled in and chasing him, hunting him down. Looks like uh, big... Is it uh, Grant Morris and yeah, four? Grant, yeah, Grant Morris and, and ooh, and Jeff Mould and three. So who went out? Derek was it? Must yes. have been. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, we've seen ooh, this before. Yeah, we have we? seen with, this before. Yep, Grant Morris chasing, hounding yeah. right to the line, but not quite getting there. And for, so once yeah. again, it's uh, Chris Emmett for three quarters of that race. Uh, Chris never made any any ground on him. That was all out of the start. So, just, I think, I think, uh, Grant, you, 
practice your starts and you're going to get the better measure of them. <laughs> Just a little bit quicker out of the blocks. And you're gonna, There's you're, always you're, something to yeah, work on. You're going to give, you're going to give Chris a, a fright because for three quarters of that race, yeah, you've uh, just sat there sitting level with his cockpit. Anywho, moving on through, here come the big boats back in. Always nice to see them. So this is the uh, event 141, the under-16 women's K4 200 straight final. Hawke's Bay in lane three, Munara in lane four, Poverty Bay in five, Hawke's Bay, another Hawke's Bay crew in six, and Arawa over there in lane seven. Well, this Hawke's Bay crew, the um, Hamilton Merlo Ohio Hall, they've had a pretty good regatta, but so too the others when you look at it's the other Hawke's Bay team with Stovall in there, Arawa with Pernaya, Helena Pernaya, Dixon, Gard and Crossan. So we'll see who comes out on top in this. Looks quite even. Mm. See, it's a good sweet. group of uh, single kayaks up there, so yeah. that'll be the Masters men. So a final for them, the 35 to 44s, and then a semi-final of the 45 to 54 men, uh, K1s, and then a semi-final of the 18 and under men's K1. So lots of K1 paddlers should be hovering around the back, ready to slot into the starting area. Just waiting for our fifth and final boat pop, uh, pop in here for the under-16 women's. That's Poverty Bay. So well done, all those five crews. Just as the rain's starting to come down yeah. again. That wind's picked up too, I think. Mm. Just remember, folks, I can just see those K1s, K2s slipping down the hill again. Please make sure they're right up. You want to get a high tide and the boats get washed away, would you, John? No. Oh. I think high tides due at two this two in the morning. <laughs> Seen it happen, of course not here. I'm, I jest, but um, certainly in the, in the surf events. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Five very strong crews for the under sixteen women's K four. Lanes three and six, it's Hawke's Bay. And lane three from Hawke's Bay, their start is good, but not as good as out on the far side, strangely enough, Arawa. Yeah. Really outstanding start. And also here on the inside, this Hawke's Bay group, this quartet of uh, Parker, Hamilton, Merlot and uh, Ohio Hall. So on the inside and on the outside, but John, I think perhaps, yep, you're correct, over that far side, the Arawa quartet these young ladies both ploughing into that rain good fight back from good Hawks fight, Bay and great Poverty Bay back. attacking as well but it's going to be Ottawa Ottawa just from Hawks Bay and Poverty Bay in third place and uh, in between them the next Hawks Bay team and uh, Mana uh, finishing in fifth place this was the final and Hawke's Bay are hunting those medals, aren't they? They're right. getting a few in, these, uh, in the age groups. Right, Masters men. This is, the, this is a straight final. We're flying through these finals. So Masters men, the 35 to 44 age group. So we've got a few Waitra in them in lanes two and three. That's uh, Graham and Carl. And then we've got Poverty Bay. We've got Kim. We've got Hawke's Bay and Dan. We've got Danny from Morrison Unaffiliated. And uh, Wing Cam from North Shore and Troy from White Trap. As we see these guys, you should be coming around to the start. Keep things rolling through. And then after them is the under 18 men's K1 200. I saw them already on the water. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So the, K, the K2s are there. So these uh, Masters men floating around in the back there. Probably going to be called to come through soon. All these volunteers lying it. They can't be too pleasant. No, I just there. looked at that. Look at them. 
they're dressed for yeah. canoeing, but not for... Getting... They're dressed for sailing in the yeah, seven seas, yeah, I yeah. think. <laughs> Around the world. Good test to wet weather gear here. There's volunteers sitting on the pontoon are wondering why they're doing it. But now they're put into high alert as in come some of the Masters men's. I see lanes four and five coming in. That's uh, Kim Headley and Dan Driscoll. They're coming in from the left. They're the first two in, in fact. The rest are all uh, messing around. But they've obviously had the call to get in there. But of course they're masters men, they can do what they like. <laughs> yep. Or so they think. And here we come, the yellow boat. Ta Troy's yeah, yeah, Troy, Troy Burbage. Yep. I can't I think oh we just got maybe one here sitting by the starters pond. No, that's us. Right. So one, two, three, four. We're missing a few. Yep. Graham O'Grady's gone in. He's uh, out of two in the blue and white. No one in three yet. Looks like um, K Kim Headley's in four. Coming down He's the course there. now. Five. No one in six yet. No one in uh, seven Here we yet. go. Here comes a couple of guys. Oops. That's us. Yeah, don't paddle too far up the, up the course, guys, because we want to get these uh, races ticking through. So I think here comes a few stragglers to come around. It's not, sh not sure the message got to yeah. a few of them. Yeah. All of a sudden there's a heads oh. up and uh, we see Danny Morrison look over and see other boats lined up and thinks uh, I'd better get there. So he comes in to lane number six. He goes past Troy Burbage, who's there. Wang Kam is not there in lane seven. So maybe a scratching there. Lane eight. Yes, lane six. Yes, lane five. Lane four. No one in lane three. Nobody in lane yet. three. So Carl Barnes not there. And no lane seven. Okay. That's wing cam. So I think we, we're... Oh, Got as many as we're going to gonna get. Going to get as many as we're going to get, yeah. Right, let's get this way. So all five crews away. Great start there out there in the bright yellow boat. That's Troy Burbage. Also, just on his inside, going very, very well. Yeah, Danny Morrison. But Danny normally gets to about the boys, and all of a sudden he remembers that, oh, this is taking a bit of effort. But maybe not today. He's going really well. Lane four also going very well. Poverty Bay. That's Kim Headley. So I think that's who we've got our medals, folks, first, second, and third, and we could throw a blanket across them at the moment. It's going to be tough between lanes six and eight, and probably Troy, Danny, and then lane four. That's Kim. Troy, Danny, and Kim. And then coming across there now, lane two. That's Graham O'Grady. Well done, guys. Thanks for turning up. All sucking in the big ones over there. <laughs> Look at Troy. As you said, uh, he goes, I can't, I'm not doing that. That's my last race ever. <laughs> he's probably said, with all due respect to Troy, he's probably said that 20 times. That's my last race ever. And we'll see him back next year, probably for a few more races here this week at these nationals. So, yeah. And, um, and I can 
you see the look on Danny's face too. That's my last race ever. No, I think you'll yeah. get the buzz again now yeah. because, as you said, he you know tended to just flag it a wee bit yeah. around about the halfway. Yeah. But not this time. He fought through for a good silver medal. Yeah, well done, guys. Just uh, moving on now. So we got a semi-final of the Masters Men event one four three. So Dave Sleep and three, Neil Gard and four. There, there, Mike Walker and five. Yeah. And Ryan, uh, Ryan McBrearty and six. Bang, they're all ready to go. Well done. So this is a uh, semi final, what was yes. it? Yeah, one yeah. on one. Yeah. So under 18 men, I can see you hovering around the back. Very good. We should also see. Um, one four five has been scratched, so there's no race there. Good, that'll take up some time. One four six, the under eighteen women's K four two. Yes, getting on the water. Well done, everybody playing their part. Gee, that was a good, strong, loud hooter, wasn't it? And Dave Sleep responded well. So too did Mike Walker, and also Ryan out in lane six. Now just closing up as out was Neil Gard, but I think Mike Walker has the edge at the moment. So they come to the first of the yellow boys, 100 to go for Mike Walker. He's got the orange top on the boat. Black cap on. And maintaining good form through here. So this is the semi-final of the 45 to 54s. David Sleep is well awake as he comes through and hits the line in second place just ahead of Neil Gard and that means Ryan McBrearty might be the fourth finisher in that Masters men's 45 to 54. You couldn't help yourself, could you? No, John? I couldn't. No, no. <laughs> and he'll, he'll be saying, oh, uh, not another one. Uh, yeah. So, under 18 men's event 144. This is another semi-final. Look at them rocketing in here. So we've got uh, uh, North Shore in lane one. We've got Bayer Plenty in lane two. White Trout, Noah Andrews in lane three. Matt McKendry, Poverty Bay lane four. Poverty Bay again in lane five. North Shore, that's Brighton in six. Uh, Raylan Lowe from Karapiro in seven. Ollie Egan, here he goes. Poverty Bay in eight. And Julian De Silva, lane nine. This is event 144. 144. This is a semi-final. Yeah. And looks like we're all lined up to go. So Max Kennedy has looked pretty good out of lane five throughout Bryden's story as well. You've mentioned Ollie Egan over in lane eight. It's a semi-final. Shonosuke of North Shore. Yep, a few of the next race competitors going down, the under-18 women's K4s. She'll be pretty much already down there. I see a few of them. Oh, there we are. That's a. We didn't need that. A minute lost or yeah. two. Just hope they just back straight up. They pretty well um, lean four. Get them set again quite yeah, quickly, don't yeah. they? So Matt McKendry, Poverty Bay, Lane, and also over there in Lane Nine, Hawks Bay, Julian. So the next. Okay, they've had the finger pointed at them, you naughty boys, for for breaking. But however, the next person to break As I was saying, the next person to break, you are sadly, you're automatically out. We don't want to see that. Gosh, you're some Tough athletes out there. Yep. Looking at it. It's all cool. But they're still <laughs> still in their <laughs> raising vets that to you and me, John, remember them as singlets. <laughs> yep. Just a 
open, just get a bit close. Yeah. Yep. Just fixing up, and we've got very sensitive headsets up here, and you, they just slip off your head occasionally and start making those annoying noises that you can hear out there. I'm not talking about our voices. <laughs> They're annoying all the time, but uh, it's just those brushing the microphone, and we get a good start this time. Ooh, Very good start. Yeah. Pick a leader out of that. Lane down, five, maybe, yeah. the white. So lane one down here, Shinazuki uh, from North Shore. Yep. Going very well. Kennedy up there in the middle. Oh, they're and still the white. together. They're still together with a little less than 100 to go. This is still anybody's coming through. Lane four. Lane four having a big kick, but lane five got the measure of it. Listen to that crowd. They'll tell you. Kennedy holds. Kennedy just holds. And Kennedy hits the line first, um, ahead of maybe uh, Charlie Mayston from Bay of Plenty. Where did he come from? Out of lane two. Yeah. And um, also, as you mentioned, Matt McKendry from lane four finished well. Brighton yeah. Story out of six. Now, when you look at this in the context, John, that was the semi. Yeah. So we've got these guys are. So if that's any uh, thing to go by, you wait till we see the final of that age group. Very competitive, under 18. Well done, guys. So coming around now, here comes the big boats, the under 18 uh, event, 146. There is no 145, folks. So 146, the under 18 women's K4 200. There's four crews in that as they're coming around the corner. We've got uh, North Shore, Dennis, Trewoon, Davies and Duffett. They're in lane three. Ottawa, Baxter, Webb. Uh, Akoi and MacDonald in four. Uh, five from Wanganui is uh, Stuart O'Leary, Anderson and Toy and Waitra. Here we go. Pradet, Barnes, Richardson and Gold. So they've already pocketed a fair amount of loot, this, this Waitra quartet. Can they do it again? Confirming that Troy Burbage did win that 35 to 44 from Danny Morrison, and uh, Kim Headley took third place. So after this uh, K4, uh, we should see, we're going to see three heats. So the junior mixed K2 200s, all the under 16s. Good to see you guys are getting down there. Let's roll these through and show Let's show the uh, the older age groups how it's done. The under 16, one four, that'll be event 147, 148 and 149. We've got three heats. No surprise in there for the K2 with all these uh, uh, under 14s, under 16s to make up the numbers. Rolling on through. Got the uh, last K4 to go in there. That's the closest to us. It's lane three. They're just backing in now. That's North Shore. Now the three crews sitting there poised, ready to pounce. So this is a final. Under 18 woman. They know how to get these craft. Only 200 metres, but they'll, yes. have, they'll have them up out of the water in a jiffy. This is where the start really yeah. counts, doesn't it? Then it's going to be a sprint home. There will, you know, there will be no settling in, and that's not for a K4. So the race plan is, right, we go out hard, and then we go hard, and then we go harder, and then when we come to the finish line, we're going to go hard. <laughs> yeah. 
there used to be uh, guys so. to paddle. There was his race plan all the way. There. That would be, and that was a thousand. <laughs> so we just said, should we just go hard the whole way down the course? He goes, yeah, pretty much. But for a two hundred. That's exactly what, yeah. what has to happen. There's, uh, you try telling a, a, a sprinter over 100 metres. So go hard. Yeah. It's funny. I did speak to a sprinter over 100 metres once and they gave me a rundown like it was a marathon. <laughs> Anywho, they... Uh, Arawa. Arawa, Arawa yeah. Yep. In lane three. Yeah. Uh, lane four, that is. Two from the inside. Arawa just holding. Oh. Baxter, Webb, Akoi and McDonald from Ottawa maintaining that lead. Now the go hard call comes yes. out from the rest. Yeah. <laughs> but Ottawa are going harder. Yeah. Gosh, they just look so good. That's smooth. Smooth operators there. Ottawa, Baxter, Webb, Akoi, McDonald, they take the final of the women's under 18 K4 yeah. out of lane four. Either side of them, really good finishes from North Shore and Whanganui. And on the far side, Waitara. Didn't quite see who got up for third, John. Was it Waitara or the North Shore Club? I'm not too sure there. We'll just leave that to the, um, the, to the officials. Right, here we've got three heats of K2s coming up. These are the mixed K2s. So we're going to see these under 16s show us how it's done. So we we'll So three heats of uh, the junior mixed K2 200. This is for the 16 and unders. So no doubt if it's mixed, we've got a male and female, and it's all different. Should you go hop in the front or should you hop in the back? So just going back to that uh, previous race, 144, the 18 and under men's K1 200. Uh, Max Kennedy from Poverty Bay was the winner from Matt McKendry of Poverty Bay and Charlie Mayston Bay of Plenty. Bryden Story of North Shore finished in fourth place. So a couple of medals there for Poverty Bay. Yes. They don't seem to have the CRNZ app up and running but there was uh, in yesteryear we were able to click on that and just to see how they got a running progression on how the clubs were going so I think they quite try to keep that secret yeah. now don't they or oh, do they? Oh, I don't know oh. <laughs> but uh, the managers will know the clubs will know exactly where they're sitting Lane two is there, lane three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all there. And the next group are waiting patiently behind. Look at uh, lane four, brother and sister, Almanger. Good clean start. Oh, they're that white boat over there in lane seven, Hawks Bay, Cortell and Nukatai. They've got a beautiful start, but even better. <laughs> Being scorched, though, even by Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. is uh, Crossan and Monk going very well indeed in this first heat. So Crossan and Monk in the red boat, over, and they kick again. They kicked it. <laughs> so young lady in the front, bloke in the boot, and they're pushing that down. Looks to be how most of the pairings are. We, we trust the girls to get us down. Well, they're all in the front. Oh, your big smiles yeah, as they yeah, look across. Yeah, well and done. see the rest a fair way back. And in fact, they might have seen that other Ottawa team of um, Helena Pernia and McDonald finish in second place. Wow, well, that, that was smooth. Yeah. Just loved that right from the start. Ottawa away quickly. Hawks Bay, Cortell and Nukatai also, as you mentioned, and the white, their, their start was very good. So that's the first one done. First heat of three.
Well done. Congratulations to Ottawa. You've won that. Relax now. To your final. So the next event, 148. Uh, this is the second heat of the junior mixed K2 200. So we've got uh, Worcester and Fraser from Bay of Plenty in lane two. Owens and Hills from North Shore in lane three. Uh, Elof and Cameron Bennett from Mana in lane four. Uh, Son and Ainsworth uh, from five. Uh, lane five from there from the North Shore. We've got Stovlin Hutchinson from Hawke's Bay in lane six. Um, Harrison <laughs> in McBreetree. Uh, Hawke's Bay in seven. And Semenoff and Guard from Ottawa. You just seem like you're just reading these names over and over yeah. again. They're, they're just uh, in every single race. Busy programs. Yeah, they have some of these. Of course, with modern technology, you'll be able to find out who does most races, they sum it all up for you, and there'll be some great contenders in there. That 18 and under K4 yeah. for women was, was uh, confirmed Aroa, uh, winning it from Whanganui. Picked up the second place uh, just ahead of North Shore, with Waitara in fourth place. So, gold to Aroa, silver to Whanganui, and bronze to North Shore. It was the women's 18 and under, K4. We've got seven crews. It's funny, John, remember when we kicked off yesterday morning, we were saying who's going to talk with their microphone off or on, whatever the case may be. So I, th I think we've thrown, I win that title. <laughs> well, I think I did quite uh, well. I, uh, I remember saying I was commentating on that race very well, and then I looked down and my microphone was off. Uh, I was just checking it now, uh, and it is on as we see this second race and two white boats oh, yes. exploding out of the start. The one on the inside is Worcester and Fraser of Bay of Plenty. And uh, way out wide, that's Hawke's Bay Stovall and Hutchison out of lane six. Certainly got our first three crews showing out here. I can't see them losing it from here. No. But over that far side in that grey boat, that's Ottawa once again. Guard and Simonoff going very, very well. But not, not going to give it to them on the silver platter. Lane six. That, of course, is Hawke's Bay, Stovall and Hutchinson. Yep. They had a great start. They're just settling in and, ooh, coming home just on the inside here. Lane two. We did see you. Well done. Six, eight, and two, I think it was. Yes. So, Stubble and Hutchison. It's Hawke's Bay, six, Ottawa, eight, and Bay of Plenty in lane two. So that's the second of our three heats. And the third one lining up now with um, Wanganui in one. Oh, sorry, in lane two, the closest to us, uh, North Shore, Ottawa, Hawke's Bay, Mana, and the second North Shore combination. So as we look at them parking up now, do we have oh, there's more coming in? So lane two, Wanganui's uh, Stewart and Tullock, uh, Bota and Davis, North Shore, uh, Panea and Dixon, Ottawa. In five, it's Jones and Egan, and in six, Cooper and Havaneth, Mana, and then Vaughan and Orman of North Shore. Final heat, junior mixed K2. So getting very busy down there on the, on the jetty because we've got a lot of K2s happening now. So we've got, after this final heat of the junior mix, we've got the senior mixed. And there's three full heats of that. And again, all K2s. So we've got to quickly roll these through because no doubt the clubs will be sharing the boats and we're just waiting for the last crew of this last heat of the uh, junior mixed K2 200 16 and unders that's just mana coming in there
Gosh, that hoot is so loud, it gives you a fright. You just want to race Wake, away. Woke you up, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, just on the here on the inside, I would give that to uh, Lane 2. That's the Wanganui pairing of Stewart and Tullock. They had a very, very good start, but just maybe rolling through and over the top of them now in the blue boat, we see North Shore, Davis and Botha. So I give it to those two crews. Yes, North Shore maybe just coming away with it now, still very close. Third spot's definitely between Lane 5. I'll give it to lane five, but just down here on the inside for this last mixed heat. We've got, it. will it be, I think it will, lane yep. three, yep. just taking out. So that was lane three, north shore. Water Over, in the front, yeah. Davison behind. That's yeah. uh, lane three. And uh, Wanganui with Stuart and Tullock there. And I think lane five got up for third. So well done to you young under 16 athletes. I've seen some pretty impressive stuff. I want to, uh, we've said it often about coming back to the Nationals every year and seeing how some of the younger brigade have progressed. Some of them aren't here, of course. They decide that it's not for them and they're not going to carry on as other things take priority. But we're hoping to see the likes of, uh, we can just see them coming back now, Borta and uh, his partner, in that base boat, uh, Davis coming back, and we hope to see plenty more of them. Look at the smiles on those faces. Yahoo. And you, you deserve it too. So well done to that young pairing from the North Shore in Lane 3. Well, they were challenged at the end, weren't they? They had to Absolutely. work hard to win that. Yeah. So we got through all those three heats. So the good news is you've made it through to the final. We can tick that box. That's the first step done, because it's very, very hard to win the medal if you're not in the final, <laughs> as I've found out many a time. Yeah. So we should be rocking up now into the three heats of the senior mixed K2. And there aren't many boats in sight there, so I can see them now. That's good. They're starting to rock off down towards the start area. It's a quick change around for a lot it of is. you, of course. You're sharing yeah. boats and yeah. um, you can only do so much, but you've done a fantastic job of yes. making up that time as that threatening weather doesn't, well, from where we're sitting, it doesn't look overly threatening ah, yet. Ah, I think it might be the calm before the storm, Yeah, John. okay, right. You should know that living in the yeah. uh, foot of the Tarua Ranges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, there is a... We're not going to relinquish the fact that there is a bit of a weather band making its way from the top of the North Island down through. So I had a wee look at it, at the rain radar. It's there all right. So the first heat of three senior mixed K2 200. Some of you in already. That's uh, Arawa, Rogers and McDonald, uh, North Short, four... Teams from North Shore, Tate and Roy, Clifton and, or the Cliftons, uh, Moore and Saunders and Barrett, Garrett and Bull, uh, Bay of Plenty, Richardson and Mayston, Mana, Trewern and Calvert, and Waitara, McCullum and Padrut. So this North Shore pairing of uh, Christy Tate and um, Andrew Roy coming up against Ethan Moore and Saunders, it's going to be... Yeah. Hard to pick. It's going to be very hard, hard to, to pick, predict. Actually. It's going to be a grudge match between the, those club mates. This is where, you know, where they make such strong K4s. So we can see some K4s actually going out on the water because that has to be, looking through the program here, the under 14 mixed K4. So good to see you guys getting out there because even though you guys are getting out there, there's three heats ahead of you that we're going to quickly fire through ASAP. Look at them running down there. Good to see. Be careful, don't slip over. Yep, boat with number six on it being gently placed underwater, but the, the crew really walk very quickly, jogged down through the tent and uh, picked up their number and dropped it in the water. 
Yeah, so that's, um, so a lot of fast action down there. Really well done. It's putting you under a bit of pressure, but it's um, hoped that with your cooperation, we'll get through before this yeah, they uh, unseemly weather arrives. That was very quick. I think that was Whiter, McCullum, and yeah. Padrut. So they're going to go Julia. straight across the face of the course. So great sportsmanship shown here by their fellow athletes. So of course, if, uh, at a in big international level, if you're ever late for a race, it's um, a DQ, and you're not only DQ'd from that race, you're DQ'd from any other races that you're in. And I can think of a very sad case indeed at the 88 Olympics, John, I don't know whether you remember it, we had a French pairing that were favoured to win the gold medal, Bouchery and Bochera from France, and uh, they were all lined up. Of course, we had the K2 pairing of uh, Ferguson and McDonald, and there was just this gaping wide hole where there should have been the French crew, and they had uh, slept in. Oh, they slept had, in. They had oh. slept in at, for the Olympic Games. And, of course, uh, that was them disqualified. And uh, one of the athletes, Bokra, he stood about six foot seven, six foot eight in the old terms. And uh, that, he was DQ'd out of the K1-1000. Oh, because of that. Because of that, yep. yeah. So... It's not the sort of thing that you want to make a habit of, but I think here, common well, sense is prevailing, yeah. you know, for... Um, Arawa, Arawa, Arawa. Yeah. We've, we've seen them um, jump on board. There was a rush. They, it was yeah. certainly not their problem. They uh, took advantage of the boat as soon as it was there, had the number on it, and they're backing up now into lane yeah. number one. So that means we're uh, all set to go yeah. in this uh, first heat of three. And there are plenty of others uh, around the, behind the pontoon, so it looks as though we might get heat two away quite quickly as well. Let's hope so. So eight crews. Arawa, who have just arrived in there, so not the best preparation for them. But it might well be just what they need. <laughs> Feel as though you're at a disadvantage <laughs> and yes. just... Oh, a little da. surge of adrenaline. Yep. Yeah, so we've got... Um, you know, as long as we get down the course, we've got three heats here. Okay, we're, we're a little bit late to our race. Um, we don't want to have it happen again. And it, but it does happen. We're there. We're in the starter's hands, and we're away. And it's a good, clean start out. So the white trick crew over there in lane seven, they were a little bit late. Look at their mount. So they've got... Uh, they'll be shouting everybody a cup of tea for waiting for them. <laughs> Yeah, and so also, as you say, John, this uh, Ottawa crew we were waiting for, probably they were waiting for their boat, but look at this also. Lane three flying out. That's North Shore, Clifton and Clifton going very, very well. But lane six looks like they've got it for this first heat. Yep. Oh, six, three and eight, I think. Yep. And so as I'm looking at them, so well done to Whitra. Lane five just had a bit of a mishap there. So Whitra, uh, one of the North Shore teams, Clifton and Clifton at um, North Shore, and I think third place was Garrett and Bull. But um, yeah, and lane five, Mana. <laughs> Athletes, uh, Lane 5, Mana, yeah, yep. Trawoon and uh, Calvert. Just so we see oh, they're almost loaded, fully loaded yeah. for the second of these heats. Um, for the third, we'll have um, Otago, Mana, North Shore, Arawa. But for this one, it's in Lane 1, they're there, North Shore, Clancy and Wodehouse. Um, Bay of Plenty there in two, just getting in there now. Scott and Walker. Wanganui comfortably placed there. Hurley and Clifton waiting for boat number four. 
That's uh, Nataki and Demopolis. So that's uh, vacant at the moment, although there's one coming around with no number on. We'll see. So five is North Shore, Gatland and Cam. Yes. Number six. Oh, there we see that's Nataki and Demopolis of North Shore now into lane four. And the no number is <coughs> going into six. So that might be an indication that they're short of numbers down there again. So make sh But mind you, in this rapid turnover, it's a bit understandable, but make sure you haven't got any numbers hidden away. So Kokomoa and Joyce from Arawa are there now, and Mr. Hazen and Westlake of North Shore. Heat two. That's what's weird over there in Hamilton. Um, John just showing me the rain radar and it's not looking healthy, everyone. So this effort that you're making yeah. will be beneficial. Stop start from lane five from North Shore, Gatland and Cam. The best, though, is on this inside, Clancy and Wodehouse of North Shore. Three out from them, that's Nataki and Demopolis. Going lane. pretty well in the centre. Lane four looking very strong yeah. too, John. That's Demopolis and Nataki. Yeah. So they lead from Clancy and Wodehouse of North Shore on the inside here. And third place, it'll be Wanganui's Hurley and Clifton. And um, just out from them, and maybe challenging for third, will be the no number, which was, I think, the Arrow combination in lane six. But that's good all the way win there from uh, North Shore, Nataki and Demopolis. And Clancy and Wodehouse down here in lane one. That's the second of our heats. Just, I'm not sure what happened. They did not move from the start, so just a little bit of a hiccup from that North Shore crew just uh, coasting down there. In the meantime, the competitors for race three, the heat three, I mean, e event 152. So here we've got uh, Lucy Matahiri, James Monroe. Now, on paper, this is going to be a tough one to beat, but also lane two. I don't know if Curtis is racing, but he's in he's down there to race for lane two with Emma Kemp. Yep, um, he's in the boat he's there in the, in the, boat. the front. Well yep. done, Curtis. I was speaking to him yesterday and he he didn't sound very good at all. Anyway, he's there doing it for his team in the shorter races. We've got North Shore Story and Conover. North Shore again, Logan Dis. And then we've got North Shore, Cleghorn and Prato. Arawa, McGibbon and McGibbon. And then North Shore, Firkins and Birmingham. So four North Shore teams in this one, lanes three, four, five and seven. And just be aware that lane five has no number, John. So that's uh, that'll give us... Now, just know that the red boat just returning from the previous rate was in lane five, and they didn't have a number. So perhaps lane five yesterday with the lane twos. So lane five. So just check all your belongings, folks, and uh, for any numbers that have seemed to have smuggled through with your gears. We know they normally get taken off down here uh, through boat boat scrutineering, but sometimes they may get may get missed. There's no another boat going out with no no number again. So, yeah, just uh, reinforcing what John said. Numbers are important for everyone, particularly for <laughs> for those spectators watching, to make sure they know who's where. Although most of you are pretty savvy, aren't you? You can tell where they are on the on the field. 
on the course, but no one in lane one at the moment. So we're waiting for Matahiri and Munro to rock up. And here they come now, just around the start boat. Munro in the back. So are we all there now? Yeah, we're just like waiting for these two. Just to back in. You think they'll be keen? Oh, they'll be. <laughs> they will know. They want to make the final. I mean, the, when you think of the, um, we have the nationals here every year. So it's a big trip for Otago and, and, you know, the South Island clubs to get up here. So it's a big effort for them. So... They won't be sending up any snails, you know. Well, we know that yeah, neither of them are snails. No, so, yeah, Monroe, he's been racing well all day. This is the first we've really seen of um, Lucy. Well, New Zealand representative. Yeah, and, yeah. And in pretty good form at the moment. So this must be her second or third race this afternoon. Four from North Shore in lanes three, four, five, and seven. Big powerful drive there from Munro and Matahiri in lane one. Two out from the outside though. Ottawa, McGibbon, and McGibbon. The McGibbons giving it everything. That red boat is scorching through. Watch though on lane one. This will be a top race. Munro and Matahiri. And the McGibbons out in lane six. It's smooth so to watch, eh? It is very, very smooth to watch. And I will give it to lane six, actually, just by a fraction at this. St oh, we've got some swimmers. I didn't want to... <laughs> out the court. Look at them coming up laughing. That was your fault. <laughs> I five one and down. <laughs> Only in kayak can, can you see that. Uh, just coming home here. Oh, mana. I'm what did you do? Who shall we blame? Lane, lane two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're just watching uh, live streaming here and we'll get another view of this finish. Yeah. Emma Kemp, you should know better. And if that is, I can't see whether that's Curtis. But, hey, you guys belong in the... <laughs> get back down a few grades to the uh, novices. This is, oh, look, <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> They're looking up too, and uh, we can see you guys. Yeah, we can. You can't hide. Oh, hey, you, look at this, you guys, two of our most experienced paddlers in New Zealand, and they've decided to go for a swim. So, Well, it's a place where you, you set records, too, isn't yeah, it? doesn't make you feel too bad just uh, for these others who were, uh, you know, the under-14s, under-12s. And uh, you've got <laughs> Olympic athletes. Uh, yeah. I hope that wasn't on. I hope we never got that on the movies. Oh, no. And I think deservedly so, you can swim to shore rather than the IRB coming to get you. So K fours, here's the big boats back in. This is John. Who we got here? The under fourteen mix, two heats. Yeah, gosh, it's getting dark out there. Or is that just me? So yeah, uh, no crew in lane one. We've got our first crew is North Shore in lane two, East Side in lane three, North another North Shore crew in lane four, Poverty Bay. And just looking at that, Egan Willoughby, Faithful, and Kemp uh, in lane five. And uh, in lane six, Ottawa. Look at there's Panea, Semenov, Jex, and Roberts. The robbers, rather. So, ooh. So under 14 mixed. I'm presuming the ratio is two for two.
So this is uh, heat one of two. North Shore a bit awkward out of the start, uh, but not so for Ottawa. And the far side, they're looking as though they have this under control. East side paddlers in lane three are the nearest challenges. Just watching their rotation, it looks uh, well in sync. Nice, but uh, on the far side, Ottawa. Poverty Bay inside them. Then North Shore, but East Side Paddlers are in second place. They are travelling out of lane three. As we see the first heat won by lane six, that was uh, Ottawa. And then <laughs> very close, fast finishing Poverty Bay might well have just pipped uh, East Side Paddlers for second place. Just coming home here, lane two now. So that was uh, North Shore, Owen Zanesworth, Lomax and Gabor. So well done. So before we get into this under 14 mixed, as we see them coming around, John, you got a quick announcement? Oh, just from biosecurity here. Yeah. Um, talking to Ashton, he was saying about, you know, the problem with the lake and um, this dreadful, what do you call it? This the golden been, clams. Yeah, that's been brought in from the US, basically. Uh, if you're leaving today, uh, they do f request that you spray, water blast your boats inside and out. Uh, the equipment is all down here in, in, uh, by the Waipa tent. So spray, uh, water blast inside and out. Leave the boats to dry for two days before putting them back in water. So if you're leaving today, please do that. Not many of you are leaving today, but the same will apply tomorrow, of course. So. Managers, please make sure that everyone's aware of this. It's such a dreadful thing that has infiltrated our waterways and we don't want it to go any further. So water blast inside and out before you take your boats away. Leave them to dry for two days. Yeah, so it's good to uh, see that Ashton, you know, a good competitor within our ranks, Yep. He's the uh, biosecurity officer, so he's come up here and he said it's been a very, very busy summer and this is the last event. So uh, I guess every single boat tomorrow, as John says, will need a good spraying inside and out. So please abide by those. We don't want uh, the finger pointed to anybody. No, no. Eh? You yeah. know, the Arawa crew yeah. take it yeah. down yeah. through the yeah. South oh, Island or Dini, Otago or be wherever you're going. You just don't want to feel that mm. responsibility. So ensure that the protocol is followed here. So uh, what heat? We're up to heat two of 154. this of, uh, yeah, event. 154. Uh, the second heat of um, the under 14 mixed K4 200 metres. So we've got five crews here, no crews. Look at them all backing in there, ready to go. So no crews in lanes one or two. So our first crew we see is lanes three, Kinsella, Willoughby, Atta and Wainohu. Uh, we've got Hawke's Bay in lane four, Waitra in lane five, and two North Shore clubs in six and seven. I'm just looking at the schedule. The original schedule had this for 4.34. Yeah. I'm looking at my phone now. It says 4.01. We did it. Half an hour. Thought we could get it. Well done. And that's thanks to yep. the athletes. Well done, so everyone. Well done. Yep, car pipe. Great coordination from within each club, managers and assistants, all those helpers have worked hard and vigorously and quickly to ensure that the schedule has uh, crammed up nicely. We've done it without any problems, really. One or two boats going without numbers, but who cares? We've got through to this stage, our yeah. last race, the second of two heats of the 14 and under mixed K4 200 in the starter's hands. Uh, much appreciated your efforts today. And then, of course, following this race, John, if that's correct, are we still on for the prize giving or are we going to rock on through? I, I haven't heard anything contrary to that. No, I think that. that's uh, prize giving. Prize giving, yep. Yep, yep. Whew. And back tomorrow, starting at 8.30 again. Yes. It's getting dark out there. Don't forget to keep these boats up. I haven't heard if there's any wind, but so help out the managers, help out your boat captains if they need to go uh, up on the trailers. Remember the old adage, if you're old enough to paddle it, you're old enough to carry it. 
So the last race of today, and then Tony, I want to see, cheer on your teammates. Oh, slow out of the blocks. If they're coming ready, we can start. Lane, that was lane three. Uh, uh, sorry, the third Whitra. lane five, Whitra. Randall Miners, uh, Cautions, Velvin and Beck missed the start. But over the far side in the white boat, that's North Shore, Vaughan, Ormonds, Hills and Hawk. So great to finish. On, and down here on the inside too, John, is it? Is that the... <laughs> it's Poverty Bay Poverty. in lane three and Hawke's Bay in lane <laughs> yeah. four. And that blue boat of North Shore in, yeah. in lane six and lane seven as well. But I think Poverty Bay are going to get up to grab this. Poverty Bay in lane three, yes. North Shore oh. in lane seven. This is nose to nose at the moment. And I think Poverty Bay just got that. Poverty Bay over North Shore. It's only a heat, but we're lifting ourselves up for this because that was such a close race. Just the four, but they were in a line. And unfortunately for Waitara, and we don't often see a Waitara team no. or individual left at the start, but you'll make up for it. Lane five, Waitara. Yeah. And uh, that completes uh, today, day two of competition. Prize giving to come. And uh, it is, again, a big thanks to everyone for your cooperation on behalf of the race team here. Prize giving is going ahead. We see the thumbs up in five minutes. Perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, so prize giving will go ahead. Um, remember, if you are heading away today, get those uh, boats sprayed inside and out and let them dry for two days. But Magnificent day. Great day, Aye. John. Just a recap on, um, as John said, the prize giving in five minutes. Please remember to come down in your club colours, whether it's your track suit, because it's cooler. But we want to see everybody in their um, club colours and uh, for the, all the photographs that are coming down here. Take these um, boats up the hill, put a cord over them, and uh, I think that's us, isn't it, John? Well, I think so. Nighty night. Yeah, yeah. A half an hour earlier finish than yeah. we, what we thought. But so we'll see you again tomorrow morning, bright and early, and hopefully the weather holds and we do have a blemish-free day to finish these 2024 championships.